Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, welcome all of you back in the room. I, um, I said that we would start at 3 o'clock to maximize our uh, time and maximize interpretation time. And therefore, um, I am looking is uh, are those people who have applied or who have uh, expressed interest to talk are in the room. I see Marilyn. Marilyn, would you like to? So while, while you're going to your seat, I will call on Michael. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to propose a couple things since we're talking now about what could be done differently going forward. Um, it seems to me that one of the challenges we've had is getting people from less developed countries or from less known institutions. Um, and, and one of the problems is that they can't assemble a panel proposal because they don't know the right people or they don't know the right good people to be on a panel. Has the MAG considered in the past allowing individuals to apply as a, as a potential speaker? Uh, I think this would have a huge advantage because then we would be able to place them on their appropriate panel. We would also have a ready list of people who might serve as alternates should some existing approved panelists have to cancel at the last minute. Um, clearly it would add to our workload a little bit but it, it might actually it would probably lead to a much better uh, an even better uh, series of panels and uh, give us more flexibility. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to touch on um, is the idea of uh, LDC workshops which was mentioned and I, I think given that many people from less developed countries are coming a very long way giving them one more reason to come by doing a LDC workshop on day zero or day minus one uh, is a very good idea. In, in general, I, I think we should find ways to accommodate as many side meetings as possible working with the, the Turkish hosts. Um, the last point I wanted to make was regarding transparency of the voting process by the MAG members. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that I am an incredible advocate for transparency. I've written reports on how companies need to have a transparency policy as well as a privacy policy. But I think the idea of having each vote from each MAG member for each proposal made public is uh, not a good idea. Uh, I think it would actually lead to potential conflicts of interest and uh, there'd be a lot more pressure on me to say to vote favorably for my friends even if I thought their proposal was not worthy. Um, certainly giving more feedback perhaps as anonymous comments or you know a score would be very helpful but uh, certainly giving individuals personal votes for individual proposals I think is unworkable. So thank you. Thank you Mike. Uh, Marilyn. Thank you. I'm going to pick up um, on where I uh, on a comment I made this morning and elaborate on it a little bit um, related to voting, which I think we have to change our terminology into something a little more neutral, uh, which may be evaluating, etc. But I think we made a major mistake last time, and we made that mistake because of both innocence and lack of resources. But the implications of the mistake were, I think, very profound. And here's the mistake I think we made. The MAG members understood the criteria, but the community did not. And um, the other thing that we did last time, which astounded me, and I'm going to be an advocate for limiting this, there were workshop proposals, maybe as many as 11 or 14, from a single entity or organization. There were workshop proposals from a single company. 
I thought we had a standard of requiring at least three different stakeholder groups in submission. So one thing I think we could do to um, lower our need to evaluate is to heighten our uh, understanding of standards, if I could use that, or rather than criteria. And, um, and we may need to have different standards for different types of um, events that are going to take place. And I'll give an example of that depending on room availability. A workshop proposal whose target is to attract 120 to 150 people might have a different standard than a workshop proposal that wants to be a round table of 25 people that takes a deep dive in a, uh, in a discussion. So I'd like us to think more about that in relation to creative formats once we understand as quickly as possible what our room options are. Secondly, I like the idea of trying to use flexible formats and I also like the idea, if it is possible, to have a group of rooms that are set aside for the ad hoc meetings. Um, and I hope we can think about that once we know about space availability. <clears throat> I am now going to recall something that might be very effective again, and that is the use of open forums that are specific to the experience that a country has, take, has had in advancing the adoption and the growth of the internet and to see whether that is something that is possible. I've been the, um, I've had the benefit of reading the uh, country, the 10 year country report that Rwanda submitted into the WISIS plus 10 um, um, working group and it's rich with information and examples where we might see some lessons learned. My final comment is going to be, um, I'm a little nervous about one of the things that we are doing where um, so many of the proposals come from MAG members and the MAG members are doing the evaluation. So again, I will say, if we can find a way to accelerate the submission of workshops with well understood criteria ahead of time from others than MAG members, I will feel more comfortable with MAG members being those who are evaluating workshops and who are prioritizing who gets in and who doesn't. Thank you. So thank, thank you, Marilyn. There are a couple, couple of things that we need to uh, factor in. One is tomorrow, as you see on the agenda, uh, first thing in the morning will be host country presentation on um, on the premises and the space available. So I think that that, that will uh, help us enormously uh, in order to understand the um, uh, parameters of our discussion. But one, one thing that I can tell you today is that uh, for everything you were uh, talking about, we have exactly 90 days, three months. So we, have, we are now in the middle of um, uh, uh, February, and uh, the, all decisions on the workshops should be made by middle of May. Uh, because in the middle of May we will have a MAG meeting and uh, in this MAG meeting all necessary decisions will be made. In between, of course, we will have intercessional, uh, very regular uh, MAG calls, uh, but this is our timetable. Because if we cannot uh, meet that um, mid-May uh, target ourselves, so we are really in, in, the big, in the big trouble. Uh, we just during the lunch did a little bit of uh, counting back uh, from from uh, first week of September, and this is where we uh, sort of uh, to conclusion that we made. It's nothing, nothing personal. It is just a mathematics. So uh, before uh, getting further uh, on my speakers list, I omitted uh, my promise to Yuri Olansipuro. Uh, uh, to make one announcement related to the extracurricular activity this evening. Yuria. <coughs> Thank you, Yanis. Good afternoon to all. Uh, on behalf of the nominating committee of ICANN, I have the great pleasure of inviting you all to a reception uh, today in the Delegates restaurant at uh, 6 p.m that is after these consultations punctually end at 6. Um, I, I sent an email to some, but uh, I didn't know all email addresses, so that uh, 
everybody is invited. Thank you. So thank you, Yuria. The delicate, Delicates Bar is on the eighth floor of the old building. Um, next, um, next speaker on my list is Vlada. Thank you, Yanis. Um, on the workshop uh, proposals uh, uh, um, mechanism, uh, here is a suggestion of five steps that we may follow, uh, following good and bad experiences from the last year. Firstly, and I think we have done with that, we asked the communities to come up with topics or policy questions, not suggesting the workshops per se. And I think uh, IGF Secretariat will summarize there, or it's also already done, the su summary of these policy questions, recommendations that uh, we should follow uh, thematically. So then the next step would be very good guidelines for the workshop applicants, session applicants, what we require them to do. And it should be very easily understandable for them. That means that we ask them for their topics to be in line with uh, general policy questions discussed previously uh, or asked previously. We need them to have a diversity of formats. We need them to cooperate with different institutions and so on and so forth. And Mervi, I think, and her group previously, and now uh, Fiona and the others have been working on what are the guidelines for the workshop proponents? What do we ask them to do? And should be more clear. The third step is, and I think that's crucial, is coaching by the MAG members. That means uh, making MAG members busy with assisting people to do the proposals in the right way rather than proposing on their own. Well, both of them. Uh, that means that, uh, especially for the new proponents of, of, uh, of workshops, we as MAG members should approach them, in cooperation with Secretariat, approach them and say, Okay, this is the topic where we have on three different proposals. Let's try to see if you can work together. Put them in touch, find the links, uh, help them work together. If they can't work together and insist on having their own sessions, then we can see if we give them bigger or, or lower priority. But we need to help them uh, work in the right way. The fourth step is uh, after we do that and try to merge in the early process, which is probably in the next a uh, month or so immediately after the end of the application process. Uh, then we say, okay, we, this is the list of sessions. Hopefully we have less than 150 or whatever. And we say some of the sessions do not need to be workshops. They can go within capacity building track, for instance. And I gave an example of Bill Woodcock and Clearing House, Packet Clearing House, which had a number of very good proposals last year, but they were not for the sessions. They were for capacity building, how the IXP works, what is the IXP, what is the IPv6, and so on. Then we choose different uh, formats for different sessions. We choose different length for some sessions. Some sessions can last for 20, 30 minutes, believe it or not. Uh, the next step is the selection. And the, only then we come to selection, not voting, but selection or evaluation, where we really need to have clear criteria, and Fiona has been working on that, and Susan has mentioned it, and I'm sure she will elaborate tomorrow more on that. Uh, but make sure that we have transparency and we respond to those that are declined, why they are declined, if we really need to do that. So these are the five steps. And just to maybe remind what I think, what Henriette uh, raised before, and I think it's really crucial, it is funds for bringing people from developing countries to the process, to the IGF, but also funds for the capacity building before or in between the two IGFs. Because if we expect next year to have newcomers so proposing good proposals for the workshops, we need to start doing capacity building with them now, this year. Thank you. So thank you. I would like to draw your attention that in synthesis paper on page 5 and uh, 6 and actually 7, we have a list of suggest suggested themes, sub-themes and uh, issues that could be discussed in um, in Istanbul and maybe to curtail, as I mentioned we have 90 days, maybe to curtail the first out of five steps you outlined, Lada, maybe we could uh, already now look at those uh, uh, suggested themes, sub-themes and uh, 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 at the end of tomorrow uh, come with a broad outline of four or five uh, big themes that uh, uh, Istanbul meeting would address, that's just a proposal for consideration. Virat, please, you are next.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as somebody who unsuccessfully submitted proposals for the first time last year and uh, scored at 0 0.03 less than the cutoff on two of my proposals, um, I share the heartburn and the understanding of the challenges one faces when a proposal doesn't get through. Um, two or three things that I'd like to mention from somebody who used to be an outsider, have participated in many IGFs, in spite of which I was unable to write a proposal that qualified. Um, and hopefully this would serve as some of the lessons for all of us collectively to better structure our processes. Um, firstly, I think the process of scoring should be fairly specific and outlined in advance before such proposals are submitted. Second, there were several proposals ahead of mine which had names of very prominent IG activists across government, civil society, um, businesses. But in the final analysis when those sessions were conducted, the names were changed either altogether or fused. So in that sense, a sort of process had been perfected wherein you knew how to get past the threshold and get proposals approved and then after that change large parts of it uh, because you were in and there was no way of checking what multi-stakeholder content still remained in those proposals since multi-stakeholder participation was a big part of the scoring. So I suppose we'll have to put some checks and balances so it's not a sort of a loophole that professionally trained proposal makers can get through. Um, the last piece that I would say from last year's experience and then come on to some more suggestions was that uh, the very high scoring proposals were sent into what was called mentoring or a consolidation process. And uh, we were sent to themes that or proposals that made the cut but very similar and we were told to go work with them. When we approached them, they just said flat no. Once they said no, it was game over. Uh, you couldn't uh, then push this back and say, but we've been told by the MAG to work with you. We have fairly common stuff we can contribute. Um, again, this, none of this is intentional. Or this is not something that is perfect. But I thought I will um, share this with you as someone who came close to the cliff and the cliffhanger. Um, we did, however, uh, co-host along with the Government of India an open forum that went exceedingly well, and I thank uh, Marcus and uh, Secretary and Mac for uh, making way for that and ensuring that that sort of session was held <coughs> and held successfully. Um, if I may just turn back to this year's um, discussions, um, there have been some comments around um, best practices and whether that is part of what should occur uh, or not occur and um, whether we should keep this as a policy dialogue. Um, I submit to you, sir, that um, I look at the Tunis agenda, which um, is the document from which the IGF originated. Um, section 72 D states, small d, facilitate the exchange of information and best practices and in this regard make full use of the expertise of the academic, scientific and technical communities. E, advise all stakeholders in proposing ways and means to accelerate the availability and affordability of internet in the developing world. At the time the Tunis Agenda was written, there were 1 billion approximately internet users across the world. Currently there are 2.8 billion. We still have um, 4.3 billion more citizens to cover. 
um, item F, strengthen and enhance the engagement of stakeholders in existing and or future internet governance mechanisms, particularly those from the developing countries. H, contribute to capacity building for internet governance in developing countries, drawing fully on local resources of knowledge and expertise. I submit to you, Mr. Chairman, and to the MAG for their consideration, that we must add to the policy dialogue the knowledge agenda for the IGF. Developing countries care about three things. They care about very high level government ministerials in discussions such as um, the ones that take place in Davos, the World Economic Forum, or the G8s, the UN meetings, and the G77. They care about decision-making forums which set standards such as the ITU, and therefore they're fully involved in that. And the only other thing they care about is knowledge exchange. It is common knowledge that the World Bank uh, is restructuring itself completely as we speak to move knowledge into their sectorial practices across the world, right inside the heart of their field offices. And this is being done because there is an increasing requirement for governments to get the knowledge agenda going. That means exchange of information and best practices, very much the theme that also finds its way in the ISOC document, uh, which makes it makes IGF more effective. So I would urge you, based and I always urge the MAG, based on the reading of the Tunis agenda, the importance of the knowledge agenda for developing countries and the fact that we all agree that IGF cannot be a decision-making forum. We're all fairly well agreed to that. So if it isn't that, then we certainly have to find ways to make it relevant to the participants from the developing economies, especially the governments, and they care about knowledge agenda as recognized in the Tunis agenda. Thank you. So thank, thank you, Virat, for, for this uh, uh, important contribution. And I believe that that clearly should be taken into account in um, preparing and evaluating uh, the proposals. So we have a remote uh, uh, comment, please. Yes, so uh, Desiree Zakaria, who is a MAC member, commented on uh, Michael Nelson's idea, saying it sounds like an excellent idea. And she also says that there is a number of good resource persons from the organization of Eastern Caribbean states who could add to the discussions but do not have the opportunity to do so through the IGF workshops. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next uh, speaker on my list is uh, Kossi. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. I will be speaking in French, says the speaker. May I continue? Asks the speaker. So, thank you. If you could just allow people time to put on their headsets and get on the correct channel, says the chairman. Thank you very much. I would like to commend the chair and the secretariat. This is the first time that I am taking part in the activities, the preparatory activities. I have been keeping abreast of MEG activities. But this is the first time I'm participating in the preparatory activities. So I think that we are all aware that this is a decision-making body. But in developing countries, sometimes we have concerns that aren't shared by the developed countries. And 
this means that sometimes we don't correctly interpret the reasoning underlying decision making. When I tell my minister that decisions taken are perhaps will when these decisions are not binding, they don't always understand that we're talking about an informal discussion where we can draw inspiration that can then be fed into the development of public policies promoting the use of internet. So I think that international concerns should be able to help our states to understand that. Even though we're not in a decision-making space, but the discussions here can inspire us. That is, both the government and the private sector. But each has its own particular role, and we should be able to draw the relevant inspiration. For example, the topics. The topics aren't always intended to find a solution to problems that exist in our spaces. We feel that the large groups want to transmit a message, and that in relation to particular topics. At the world level, of course, concerns aren't all the same. We don't have the same strength of action, but we would like to see in the proposals, we try to ensure that whenever ideas are expressed, then we be encouraged to apply it to our own situation. For the private sector, for instance, when we talk about internet for, with the private sector, they feel that since this is not a decision-making process, they don't understand why they should make a financial contribution to such discussions that since it doesn't guarantee for them that the states taking decisions will ensure that they, the private sector, or elements in the private sector, benefit. These are stakes that we can identify to ensure that our proposals may be couched in a way to make them relevant to the people in our country so they become more involved in what we're doing here. Last year, for example, the experience there, the global topic and all the sub-themes, we had the impression that they didn't link into a global interest. So we should ensure that the sub-themes are consistent with the solution to a specific problem and then tying in with the global topic or theme for the year. For example, within MUG, we could ensure that we have subjects that are validated and then we could have workshops for members to ensure greater coherence. so we can ensure practical implementation. And then we have to ensure that when people ensure that when people do invest in travel, etc., to in attend that they they can fully benefit through, for instance, the organization of workshops. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution very much. You've raised a number of significant uh, topics, themes, and uh, you've, in fact, addressed many of the concerns which are the same as our concerns also. So thank you very much. Now I call to uh, Ivan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, to think of the fact that there is, uh, there might be 70 to 100 uh, 
to 150 to 200 workshops during a few day uh, event is to me uh, mind boggling. Um, I, I would propose that we actually cut down on the number of workshops, uh, that we set a limit. Uh, I would even say a number of 25, but I don't know how that is going to sound to many. I'm sure um, some uh, eyebrows are going to be raised. But uh, I don't see why we, we, we shouldn't limit the number of workshops to 25. And then there's been a lot of good proposals until now on how to fuse the themes uh, into uh, of the workshop. So perhaps uh, as a first round in, in the selection process to have people start negotiating between themselves on uh, you know if we find that there are similar proposals to put them together to group them and to tell them okay over the next you have two weeks or a month to try to figure out a common workshop because your themes are so similar uh, and then to see what uh, the the feedback that we receive from the from the uh, from the proposals and then when the IGF happens uh, perhaps to have uh, four or five themes that we decide on and then we have for each theme two or three MAG members that act as uh, pollinators that uh, jump in from uh, the similar workshops uh, within those threads and then report to the next ones that come sequentially and then meet together uh, in between and then put together some of the uh, common ideas that come out and then at the end of it to have a common thing that comes out of, it, of that thread um, so, I, just for the sake of uh, the results-oriented uh, approach that uh, I think that many of us are, are uh, kind of working toward, uh, uh, this would be something that could be of value. Thank you. So, thank, thank you. Um, in, in the auctions, you usually uh, the increase the price. So, maybe we, we need to do uh, inverse auction and see how low we can get the number of workshops. So we heard 25 as a, as a proposal, which certainly then would, it, would entail that there wouldn't be uh, workshops parallel to the main sessions of the, of the most important teams and so on. So uh, there is certain appeal to that type of uh, approach uh, uh, that would give a lot of uh, maybe depth in the discussion, uh, a lot of participation uh, or attendance in the workshops but maybe not so much contribution uh, overall. So there are pros and cons in that. Remote participation. Sorry, I, I just... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> as, you, as you see, I'm trying to, to give priority to our remote uh, participants. Uh, next uh, to my list is uh, Izumi. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to make three points and one question, perhaps. Um, first of all, I'd like to really encourage non-MAG members here in the room because it's an open consultation. One of our jobs is to listen to the wider community. So please don't hesitate. So far, including myself, there are more MAG members speaking than non-MAG members. And the second one is a question that in the uh, MAG procedure, or procedurals and TOR draft, which was sent prior to this meeting, there was some mention about the Chatham House rule. And this, according to this document, this practice will continue moving forward. But I assume that in the open consultation, there's no Chatham House can be applied. So, but for new members and the likes, uh, just to make sure, uh, and some of us are not really accustomed to the Chatham House rule anyway. But so please just to make a clear confirmation about our rule. The third one is I'd like to echo with some of the other members have already said that we'd like to really have an open space, especially for the, our new host in Istanbul, that to put equal priority to have the rooms available for non-designed meetings. It's not um, just a um, remaining ad hoc last minute um, effort which the, some of the proposals of the workshops were f failed, but rather more intentionally I'd like to see a, a, uh, the spontaneous, creative, uh, some kind of endeavor that is not possible with other fora. Uh, this is very important. Some, some of the real well-designed, well-structured workshops will come out with very much anticipated outcomes which I sometimes don't see it that interesting. So I really like to see these got much more priority. Thank you. 
thank you Izumi for your uh, ideas and proposals uh, Laura Laura Hutchinson thank you chair my name is Laura Hutchison I'm from Nominet in the UK and we also provide a secretariat function for the UK IGF um, I'd like to begin um, by supporting um, the return of the high-level ministerial on the first day um, from the UK we have had a minister present at the last I think three IGFs and certainly the high-level ministerial was instrumental in his participation and it meant he stayed on for if and not all of the IGF but he was present for at least the first day um, I'd like to support uh, the gentleman from Moldova uh, who called for a reduction in the number of workshops there does seem to be a quite a, an amount of overlap um, with the main sessions. Um, there are many sessions with a, a sort of narrow focus, um, a narrow panel, whether it's to do with the sector or the region. Um, it was suggested this morning regarding mentoring and resources. Um, I, would, as a previous workshop organizer, um, would call for this to be available prior to selection. Um, it would be really helpful, um, possibly as an, an area we could use the regional national, national IGF network for. Um, when you're pulling together a panel, it's really hard to have the relevant context sort of outside of your own country or region. Um, and I would um, support sort of assistance with that. Um, uh, Virat co um, covered earlier the issue with merging sessions. Certainly when we've organised workshops in the past, um, in order to submit your proposal it has to be fairly well developed and we've already gone out and approached speakers and you've thought, you've thought an idea through to a fairly um, fine level and then it's not very easy to have to combine that with somebody else and then you end up with huge panels because it, both sessions have got, you know, they've gone out and approached four or five, five speakers themselves. Um, there were some comments this morning around the role of positivity and an avenue for sharing best practice. Um, I think this is a really useful opportunity and something that could be built on. Um, I think there's a lot of discussions on practical issues and it would make sense to have um, material available for reference and I think this would encourage new participants. Um, there is a lot of information on the, I, um, sorry, on the IGF website at the moment but it's not particularly accessible and I think having more dynamic and easily accessible information would help encourage new participants. Um, thank you very much. So thank you, Laura, for those those proposals. Um, next is uh, ICC basis. Thank you. Um, I am not a member of the MAG. Um, and I'm happy to uh, be here and be able to participate in this meeting. Um, it's really refreshing to be in a meeting that is so open and allows for this type of participation. Um, last year was actually my first IGF, and since then um, I have been thinking quite a bit about the importance of making the IGF relevant to the developing world. And earlier, Virat said something that I think is really important. Um, he mentioned the idea or the concept of a knowledge forum and a knowledge agenda. And the reason I think this is so important is because a knowledge agenda is really linked to a policy agenda, something that um, we all care about um, and, and, and want to develop. I know, um, based on the Tunis agenda, it focuses on access, diversity, and financing. And these are three important areas for developing economies. If we could possibly bring best practices to this next year's IGF, we could possibly combine um, the good policies and the good experiences along with the uh, tools in understanding how to implement these policies further. Um, this would also hopefully perhaps um, give an example of multi-stakeholderism and help us to further uh, build trust. Thank you. So thank you for your contribution. Andriet, it's your turn. Um, thank you, Janis. Um, so just really trying to, to synthesize or reflect on some of the useful suggestions that have come up. Um, 
I really um, like Vlada's um, proposal. I know it sounds um, as if it is diverging quite a bit from our current process, but maybe not that much. I like the idea of starting off with asking the community for input. I think the question we need to address is, do we feel the consultation process leading up to this meeting has been sufficient or not? And then I think having as a first phase um, an open process of um, inviting for um, session proposals rather than just workshop proposals. I, I really like that idea and I think that can then allow us to, as a MAG, to review those initial proposals and assess whether they are a best practice forum, as VRAT was proposing, an ISOC, or a flash session, or maybe a round table, or a workshop. I think um, it does involve uh, more work, but um, we can um, ask the proposers to propose a particular format, but we can then still review um, whether we also think that is a one-hour session, or a one-and-a-half-hour session, or a three-hour session. So I like that idea. And I think there, to, to refer to the message Susan sent, and thank you very much for summarizing that, I think after that first filter, um, or during that first filter, Fiona's proposal, um, the scoring um, system that she's proposed, could then be used at that level, at that, at that, at that first level. And then I think once um, we've applied that first filter, we can then come, as Vlada was proposing, come together um, and um, identify what's in and, and, and or what type of format we, we think a particular event should follow. And then the coaching by MAG members, I think, as Marilyn and Vlada had proposed, would fit quite well into that. So I, I, I do think it's worth, um, even if it's in a small group overnight or tomorrow morning, to, to look at that process uh, in a little bit more detail. And, and, but then I just want to also bring, uh, draw attention to some other proposals that have been made, which I think are important. The one is, and I think several people have made this, and that is MAG members, um, the conflict of interest issue. I think um, if there is a decision that MAG members should um, not make their actual votes transparent, as, as, as um, Michael was proposing, um, that's okay, but we can still achieve more transparency by at least making it clear which uh, uh, workshops MAC members voted for and which one they were excluded from voting for because there's some kind of conflict of interest. I still think we should aim at more transparency, even though I, took, uh, I take Mike's point about the difficulty um, of not giving your friends proposals a high score. Although I would imagine that most of us in this room could manage with that difficulty. Um, um, but I still think, I mean, there are issues around that and Chatham House rules as well. Um, I also think that um, something that would facilitate the selection process, um, which was really difficult last year, was being uh, easily able to assess whether this topic has been covered before or not. And I think there the work done by the Friends of IGF website has been very useful. And, and I'm wondering if that could be incorporated into the workshop selection platform, so that if the workshop deals with a topic on access, for example, uh, or internet exchange points, it's very easy to immediately go and see what has been dealt with at previous. So you should be able to link to the reports of workshops on that topic from previous IGFs. That would make it less arbitrary. Um, uh, you know, because often we reject workshops because we say the topic has been discussed, but I think making that less arbitrary um, would be would be useful. So, um, so yes, I mean, I think I think uh, it's also worth looking at. So, my final proposal really is: I wonder if we can start the day tomorrow morning with a presentation of um, the proposals, the options that Susan sent in her email. Perhaps the IGF Secretariat can, can propose what the current process, or present what the current process has been. And, um, and then if we could possibly break into smaller groups after that tomorrow, just to then finalize what our, to have a more facilitated uh, uh, um, process of deciding what are we doing this year. I think I, I'm just concerned that we, we, we come up with good suggestions, but we're not really consolidating them into concrete proposals. So just a proposal for the modality for tomorrow morning. Thanks, Janis.
Um, Andret, one, one question uh, I did not understand properly. You were talking about uh, a consulting community on topics, calling it a filter. Uh, I, I, for me, uh, it would be uh, rather uh, getting, uh, getting a shopping list, not a filtering. I, I, would you would you clarify? Um, thank you. Apologies for not being clear, Janis. No, I, I, I was um, referring to Vlada's proposal, which is that the first step is inviting the broad IGF community to propose themes and topics. So no filter would be um, applied around that. Um, and Vlada, may, Vlada, maybe you can elaborate what you thought would take place between step one and step two. The second step would be when the invitation for activities to be convened at the IGF is announced. And I think that that is then um, when you would uh, link that or invite events related to the theme in some way or in some cases not related to the theme. And once those proposals are in, then we can apply as a first filter Fiona's proposed scoring system but um, not yet apply criteria such as who are the speakers, because we know it's not realistic. We know often that those initial proposals for speakers are very provisional. And, and uh, so I think to, to ask for a final list of speakers at that stage is not necessary. So, so, so Jana, so yes, that's the, the filter wouldn't be applied at the point of asking for themes. It would be applied during the first review process, which would be a process of um, reviewing proposals that are quite general um, for events. And then we can assess whether we think they should be a, a best practice forum or a workshop or a flash session or a roundtable or some other format. But perhaps, Vlada, you need to elaborate a bit more. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Andres, for clarification. So uh, once again, I, I return uh, to uh, what I said already. We have 90 days for uh, to get through the process. And we have already uh, three pages of uh, suggested themes, sub-themes and issues gathered from the community. Why don't we start with what we have already? So that would allow us uh, sort of curtail a little bit the process and, and uh, I think that would also be uh, just a good uh, gesture towards community saying we heard you we take your uh, proposals into account and we depart from them. Of course, it may happen that this list is not complete. We may need to add something. So that's a different story. But I think we have already fairly solid departure point on three pages in uh, font 12, uh, 1.5 uh, uh, in between lines. So it's enough material to work on. Um, next on my list is Subi. Um, just a couple of things. Going forward, we just had the first meeting of the India MAG for the IGF and one of the key concerns that we see is how do we create facilitating mechanisms on best practices, on creating a cohesive environment for national and regional IGFs to learn, feed into the global IGF and what are the takeaways that we take from the global IGF at a national and a regional level where the issues are divergent, they're quite diverse and the fact that this conversation needs to be vibrant and alive, I completely second and endorse the proposal that our colleagues on the MAG have made about institutionalizing best practices. ISOC has a fantastic paper and I would urge um, ISOC if possible to take lead on this and we would all want to support this conversation forward. This also ties in very nicely on the next agenda item um, on how is it that the IGF can relate with other outward processes on global internet governance. My, my second point is about um, the, the value and the time and the space that we give to regional and national initiatives. Uh, we often bunch them together and they have extremely diverse issues. Um, I believe there are about two workshop proposals that made the cut last year 
and um, we collapsed a lot of these conversations in a single room. I, I found that conversation helpful because we could learn from each other and borrow. But if we see substantive proposals on either national or regional issues, we should be able to encourage them. Um, that is a great platform for taking away key outcomes. And um, the second suggestion is also on the IGF website where we mentioned the criteria as to how you can initiate and we can up the numbers from about 40 to getting and amplifying more regional and national initiatives on the policy dialogue. We should be able to see a thousand flowers blooming across the world. And one of the limiting factors that we've seen other than the three criteria is the fact that we list that we need to have a website which is fantastic. We also need to have a report after the meeting takes place and the meeting should be multi-stakeholder. Coming from a developing country, there is a lot of hesitation um, in terms of understanding as to where it should be housed and how it can be funded. If we can get further clarification that it does not necessarily have to be publicly funded or housed with the government of the country, we would see these numbers amplifying very quickly. One of the other key things that we do is we take the IGF to a new region and to a new country. If we can, and we want to make the IGF relevant, and if we want more people in the mains and the focus sessions, we should be able to make sure that we look at themes and issues. And I second Kosi on that. Um, if we do not find ourselves building these bridges and walking the extra mile to make sure that we are important and it makes sense for people to travel and invest that money and time in coming to the IGF, we are failing in our duty as bank members. Um, I think we should be able to integrate better as governments and host countries with local civil society and some of these themes should feed in into this conversation. And just my last point. Um, Access and diversity remain two big key challenges. We can talk about how we can make this ecosphere better, but um, the ITU puts the internet penetration in India at about 10%, which is out of 1.32 billion people. Um, very, very few people are online. Um, the same, it, there are great success stories, but these are real issues in capacity building, in providing the necessary and critical infrastructure for getting more people online. Um, so if we could look at mains and sessions that look at regional and national IGFs and also access and diversity needs to remain at the core of the conversation. We need to be able to take the internet to more people. Thank you. So thank, thank you. I think that there are uh, many needs that we need to address, but we have uh, limitations in terms of time and I think that uh, rather than argue whether that is a, a real need or not, we need to look which are really the topical <coughs> issues for this particular time and, and try to address in, in depth. And that, that would also um, uh, address those uh, concerns that um, uh, not, uh, not everybody can attend every interesting session. So we really need, this is a balancing act that we are doing, prioritization and balancing act. And it is not always easy. Patrick. Yeah, microphone, please. Microphone, please. On looking at two two tier processes, but if we look at just the fact that we're um, not judging people on their initial proposals on the number of suggested speakers or panelists, it still leaves a lot of people out of the conversation. Uh, the existing rating system, and that is what we turn to, despite the long conversations that we held in the last MAG meetings as well, um, if we're scoring people on the basis of numbers, we should be able to put together categories that do not exclude people. Um, gender diversity, geographical diversity, gender Yes, certainly, There's, there has to be enough effort that needs to be made, but for developing country proposers of workshops, if we were not to touch them on the diversity of speakers, but on the basis of relevance to topicalities, as you just pointed out, it might stand us in better stand. Thank you. Uh, so thank, thank you, Subi. Uh, Patrick, Patrick Ryan. Thank you. Is my microphone on? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Yanis. It's a pleasure to, uh, to greet you in your role here as, uh, as interim chair of the IGF. Let's hope that this uh, stays for a while. Um, I 
wanted to just pick up on a couple of comments that were made here regarding the selection criterion proposals. Uh, for those of you that are relatively new to the process, um, several months ago, I want to say it was almost eight months ago, uh, Fiona took the initiative to lay out a, a set of recommendations on how to evaluate workshops in order to lend to transparency and create some criteria that we can all use to analyze proposals. Uh, and recently, Susan has captured that and made some proposals. I think we need to get behind this in a big way as a community. Uh, one of the biggest things that we're lacking in, in, uh, in the MAG is leadership. And when somebody shows leadership, it's really easy to criticize it. Uh, it's hard to sort of get behind it. And we need to do that here. Um, there's an opportunity for us to take Henriette's excellent suggestion of working on this tonight in a small group, maybe even having a presentation on it, and working on an actual proposal that has been made months ago. It's a shame that we haven't had the opportunity to advance the discussion in the time between then and now, but we can make up for that now and we can make up for it quickly. Um, I just really think that was a fabulous suggestion of Henriette's to get behind it and I want to uh, emphasize it with the group here. So thank, thank you, Patrick. As you probably know that uh, there are no uh, more uh, permanent things as interim solutions. Uh, Paul Wilson. Thanks, uh, thanks, Giannis. Um, I've got a, a couple of comments about um, this discussion on the number of workshops. Um, it worries me a bit. I'm not sure that I'm really ready to accept the sort of limits that people are, are suggesting. But then I think it's a, a question of what we want the the IGF to be. Uh, I've been asked. Um, quite a few times how long the IGF is going to go on and I've said that the IGF is going to go on for as long as the internet keeps delivering us um, governance challenges and that's for as far as as I can see at least I mean we've got a huge amount of change ahead of us we've got another four billion people to bring online we've got um, incredible changes with the internet of things with cryptocurrencies with virtual goods with new technologies, um, you know, who knows what happen, what will happen when we've got kids building ISPs with 3D printed drones flying around above our houses. Um, in the next 10 years, there's a huge amount of change that's going to, going to happen. So I actually particularly like the idea that we try and have the IGF ex extended for another 10 years because I think it would give us uh, a better sense that this, that this thing uh, is here to, here to stay. So. That said, I think we've got a choice as to whether we want the IGF to keep to actually grow with the internet and to reflect what's happening on the internet and to accommodate what's going on on the internet, or do we want to sort of try and predetermine what it should cover and try and sort of direct and, and limit it? And I think um, I know what my choice is, but I, I think there's something to be said for said for both. But to me um, personally, I mean, I think it's a, a feature and something to be proud of, not a bug when we have people complaining that they find it hard to choose between IGF sessions. You know, it's a measure of success, I think, to hear complaints that, that people um, have got too much to see at an IGF. Um, it's, not, it's not a complaint that you'd, it's not something you'd, you'd read as a complaint if it was happening in, in a trade show or in a supermarket. Um, I think if the sessions at IGF are of, are of a sufficiently high quality, which is up to us, and if the scheduling is sensible to minimise um, duplication, then you know I, I don't think complaining about that success is really something that we should worry about. So I think um, you know the more uh, the better is is one way to to look at this. But you know, there is another approach I think, which is one which is much more controlled and architected. And um, if we were to deliberately limit the IGF to say 25 sessions, which I think is a very small number of, of sessions, then I think that what, what that creates is a need for, for us to actually architect that event to not call for workshops so much as call for um, uh, initial ideas or proposals or priorities and then for us to sit down as the MAG and actually work out how we're going to address um, these priorities in a relatively small number of sessions, not through an open and quite you know, unpredictable inclusive process um, and that's a, that's another option but I, I don't think that we've got the time to do that and I don't think it's consistent with the sort of de facto the default model that the IGF has has taken so far so you know I, I prefer the idea that we we actually um, prepare the I, IGF to to expand uh, that we do the work that really encourages high quality proposals but proposals which are 
actually uh, actually really diverse and uh, and uh, large in numbers, and we try and um, and aim for success in that in that direction. Thanks. So thank you, thank you, Paul. Uh, according to our um, agreed agenda, uh, another question to discuss uh, today would be the role or place of IGF in the evolving uh, internet governance landscape. That would include also uh, information and discussion about um, uh, renewal of IGF mandate and um, uh, the status of uh, CSTD working group uh, uh, report on improvements of IGF. So uh, I have a number of uh, further requests for the floor. Matthew, Fiona, Sandra, Constance, uh, Hossam, uh, and Mike again on the list, uh, Giacomo on the list. Um, and I really wanted to, to close it at, at this moment uh, for, for this particular uh, topic. And also I would like to call on, on um, MANG members to speak uh, about um, uh, the, the <coughs> format that, that uh, of uh, 2014 uh, IGF that we can better understand all of us that we could get sense which direction we're heading. As Paul said, we have two now on the table kind of hinted two options. One is, as we did so far, uh, the bottom-up sort of uh, uh, process where we start with the themes and then uh, workshop proposals or architected. Uh, by the MAG uh, IGF sort of architecture and then design uh, workshops or, or sessions uh, in order to reach uh, objectives. So these are two different uh, ways to, to proceed. Uh, now, Matthew, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I do actually have some comments on the role of the IGF and the broader internet governance space, but I'll restrain myself to the to the issue of workshops and and the broader issue of relevance, which is of great concern to me. Um, we talk a lot about the need to be able to attract more government participation, and we talk a lot about the need to be relevant to developing country participation top participants and to attracting more representation from the developing world. It seems to me that if we want to we have a unique opportunity to demonstrate the relevance of the IGF. And that is something that, that a number of people have touched upon so far, and, and, and SUBI in particular. And that is to actually look to the national regional IGFs as sources for issues of concern, uh, non-binding recommendations and other things. And in that respect, I would draw your attention to the excellent report of the Africa IGF, which is on the website as a contribution to this consultation. Um, it's incredibly rich and it highlights areas of concern, it highlights areas of work and if we wish to be relevant to developing country interests and I suggest we take the inputs of the national and regional IGS far more seriously. Now, um, I sympathize a lot with uh, the need to reduce the number of workshops um, and um, but at the same time, I don't think that we should take an arbitrary approach. I, I very much uh, feel the same way that, um, that Paul does in that respect. However, I do think that we can implement mechanisms that would allow us to be more precise in the way and, and more bottom-up driven in the way that we do that. So my suggestion would be that once there is a decision on the themes themselves, that we take a very um, structured approach to the workshops. And we ask that each workshop proposal specifically address a challenge, concern, or issue in that thematic space. And that would also help us in terms of the outputs, but also would help us in terms of determining overlap with other workshop proposals. So the, more, the greater the specificity in addressing a challenge that's identified within that thematic space would allow us to improve the quality of the output and to also ensure there's no overlap. And um, I'll come back later on on the other issue. Thank you. So thank you, Matthew. Fiona. Yes, thank you, Yanis. I think um, what might be helpful if, if people are going to work tonight or tomorrow about 
uh, a proposal to actually uh, pull all these pieces together is to get a clear indication from you as to what you see as the key dates in the next 90 days. I think people, we have a lot of ideas and a lot of great ideas, but we need to be practical as well. So if we have 90 days, when's our next meeting going to be? When do things need to be done in advance of that meeting so that we can build a system that takes that into account? I also, um, um, I think Matthew's recent proposal about specificity in workshops, what's going to be the output of the workshop, could be a, a useful um, uh, guiding principle. And then I think also Henriette's proposal of earlier of having people indicate when they submit something to the MAG for consideration, if it's a workshop or another type of event, whether it's a flash session or an information session or whatever else we may come up with, we should talk through what those other options are now so this can also be made clear to people so that um, when they submit a proposal, if it gets redirected a certain way, they understand why. And I, I think as much as we want to be as inclusive as possible, I think this group does need to actually accept the fact that there will be some work to proposals that are rejected. We won't be able to um, number-wise and facility-wise always accommodate everything that comes in and I'd be very supportive of really limiting the number to make it a uh, much more focused this go-around. So thank, thank you Fiona for your proposal. Sandra, Sandra's next. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sandra Hoferichter and I'm uh, one of the coordinators of the Secretariat from the Eurodic. Um, I hear there's a lot of discussion about the process of um, getting along with uh, the amount of proposals and the limited of time uh, to accommodate sessions. Um, as a person who was organizing a workshop for the IGF and as a person who is in another shoe organize or, or facilitating the process for a regional IGF, um, I have in quite good insight in, in both of the sites and I like to encourage the IGF Secretariat and the MAC um, to look at um, what the regional IGFs are actually doing because they have in many ta many cases quite much more flexibility than the uh, global IGF uh, under the UN uh, umbrella has. Um, so for instance at the Euridic we are just right into the process and I think for this IGF in 2014 it might be too late but for the next uh, IGF process in 2015 it might be worth to consider um, uh, the new elements which are invented uh, in introduced on the regional uh, level for instance um, we are trying to um, ask uh, uh, session submitters to work co collaboratively on a, on a wiki space in, in our new edition and I invite the uh, audience here um, to participate, to contribute or just to observe the process and how it could be uh, maybe transferred for the uh, into the global IGF process. Um, I also like to support um, the idea or the, the um, um, proposal uh, uh, Laura Hutchinson was mentioning that um, the regional session track should be go on. I think in Bali uh, this was a very successful um, session track and, and we should actually build upon that. I mean there is a mailing list going on, there is a lot of um, uh, work uh, already done and, and we should actually build on that. This, this would be my wish for the, for the regional IGFs. Um, one small comment uh, about the reporting of a session. I uh, was in the position to submit a report of a workshop we organized for the global IGF and we had to answer questions like how many participants from the remote participants were from which region and from which country or how many uh, participants in the room where from which region or which country and I th think this was just impossible for me to to get these figures because this would mean in within a room of 100 people I have to go around and ask where are you coming from or I hand, have to hand out a, a survey or whatever. From a coordinator's side I know how many time it takes to um, ask these uh, data and to collect these data and to uh, compile these data and make it accessible in a, in, a, um, in a good manner. But I think at this point it was a little bit overdone and the Secretariat could actually um, 
and, and my, I know that gender balance and, and regional balance is important, but the way these questions were asked to a workshop organizer, it was simply not possible to answer these questions in a reliable manner. And I think the numbers which came out of this uh, questionnaire were, were not reliable as well. So I would propose just to rethink this process and maybe uh, find another way or, or skip it. Thank you very much. So thank you, Sandra, for those uh, comments, uh, remote comment. Yes, so I have a comment from uh, Andres Piazza, who believes that the main themes for the IGF 2014 should include, but not be limited to, the three topics detailed, uh, detailed here, evolution of the IGF, developing multi-stakeholder models as national level, at national level, sorry, massive internet surveillance. Also regarding the evolution of the IGF, um, to him it is important that the IGF continues to show that it is evolving and all the, these issues should be discussed at the Istanbul meeting. Certain changes need to be promoted in advance so they can be implemented during the meeting. Believes that the IGF should face the complex challenge of producing concrete results based on the, th on the search of cons uh, for consensus without implementing formal negotiation me mechanisms. Some experiences have already been implemented, for example, at the WSIS Plus 10 meeting organized by UNESCO in February 2013, and will also be used at the Net Mondial meeting in April this year. These experiences uh, should be asse uh, assessed and the most appropriate mechanisms should be implemented during the uh, 2014 IGF, me IGF meeting. Such mechanisms should include the production of preliminary documents that can later be updated during the meeting in an open and participatory ma uh, manner. This suggested change should be introduced in 2014 and subse subsequently, subsequently evaluate, evaluated. Also related to this, it is important to consider the MAG's role between IGF meetings in order to strengthen the IGF uh, as a key part of the IG ecosystem and allow more, con more concrete results to be obtained. The forum should be a place where topics can be brought up for discussion at any time, not only during annual meetings. In recent years, MAG candidate nomination systems have, been much, have seen much improvement, which has made the group a reasonable uh, representation of the community's diversity. Given this, between IGF sessions, the MAG could have uh, a more active role as an appropriate for forum for discussing internet governance issues and promoting debate with and among the community. This would further strengthen the IGF as the place to bring up internet governance issues that are not being adi adequate, adequately uh, addressed in other forums, building such a space as being a long-time aspiration of various actors. So thank you, thank you for these thoughts. Um, next on my list is Constance. Thank you very much, Chair, and allow me to extend my congratulations for your appointment. Um, I'm Constance Baumler from the Internet Society. I am a MAG member uh, representing the technical community. Um, and very quickly, because I know we're, we're out of time, um, to follow on Subi's intervention, ISOC is happy to volunteer to explore with others uh, how we could concretely organize the best practice uh, forum. Um, I would suggest that those who are interested um, we gather after this uh, meeting um, and uh, start the discussion in order to have uh, ideas to share uh, with the group tomorrow. Um, I would also echo Fiona's point. Um, it is also important for us to have guidance from the chair in terms of time frame, uh, so we have a clear understanding of uh, what kind of uh, uh, time we have to um, to to present concrete uh, proposals to the group. Thank you. So thank, thank you, Constance, and thank you for uh, commitment on, on this uh, best practice forum. 
Uh, next on my list is uh, Hossam. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, um, I am a new member of MAG as well. Um, I reflect the view of uh, an African business association present in 12 countries with thousands of members. And uh, we appreciate very much how IGF is useful to all stakeholders. Uh, we look forward especially uh, for recognition and engagement from developing countries. Uh, as Sabi and Matthew uh, highlighted. Uh, I also welcome the comments of, uh, from Casey from Benin. They were very useful and uh, for our consideration. Uh, basically, I would like to refer to the comment from Mr. Chen from the ICC basis and uh, from the chairman uh, that there are different dialogues related to internet governance and internet empowering opportunities especially related to WESIS and, inter and uh, uh, Brazil meeting. And um, uh, those are among only few events. Uh, I believe that we need to bring clearer the value proposition uh, of the IGF to all stakeholders. Uh, I wish to reflect, uh, 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 to refer back to Virat point regarding knowledge exchange, uh, but also to be able to embrace the, the diversity in viewpoints uh, reflect uh, related to, uh, to the internet governance and to be able to discuss enhanced processes using multi-stakeholder approach to answer different challenges we are facing and accordingly improve the IGF value proposition. Uh, I also join Paul and ICC basis suggestion to involve IGF participants and potential participants in continuous online engagement with the MAG in a sort of open consultation uh, once the themes and the framework are validated, identified and validated. So to have their view in the different suggested workshops. Uh, I don't think that limiting the number of workshops is the main issue. But to aggregate some common proposal is good. And more important is to secure that important workshops addressing the main challenge uh, do not overlap in time. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, taking into account the, the running time and uh, our agenda, I will now uh, draw the list of speakers, I mean draw the line on the list of speakers uh, on this topic that we can uh, go further to, uh, uh, to the uh, next item to discuss uh, and that is Giacomo, uh, Michael, ICC Basis, Phyllis, Virat, and uh, uh, Peter. And that is uh, for, for, the, uh, for, for this. I understand that everybody wants to speak. Uh, I can take uh, maybe one more, uh, but then I need to limit in the, in the length of those uh, 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 interventions. Please try to be as short as possible, and then I will put um, Council of Europe, uh, who has been uh, uh, speaking only once until now. So that is the line, and we will then move on to the other uh, topics. Sorry, Subi. <coughs> you benefited greatly from sitting right in front of me that I see every time when you raise a flag. Uh, Giacomo, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I try to be brief. My contribution is. Um, is linked also to the next topic in the agenda because I think that uh, we have um, we are managing uh, wrong time uh, processing in the agenda because I think that workshop has to be discussed after the next point but anyway now we started like this in my opinion um, the, the problem is that uh, the workshop and the plenaries are not enough linked at the IGF uh, while at the Eurodig, for instance, this, this is a continuous process in which workshops feeds the plenaries and vice versa. While at the IGF, we keep uh, plenaries um, on topics, even if the, they have not relations with workshops, and we don't move the, the, this container according to the needs of the, uh, the community. Um, my suggestion would be, on the contrary, that the, uh, th there is no problem in the number of workshop. We can have as many workshop as possible. Uh, the only num the only problem about workshop are those that are linked to the plenaries. 
and we need to strengthen the link between the plenaries and the workshop. The uh, current situation in which we have just five minutes reporting at the beginning of uh, the plenaries from the related workshop is not satisfactory, in my opinion. We need to have uh, an interaction, a deeper interaction. We have to bring people from the workshop contributing to the plenaries to which they are related, and we need to use the workshop as laboratories in which ideas that then need to be discussed in the plenary uh, help to be elaborated. Only those workshops need to be under tight control because there there is the possibility to drive the debate. So this is my proposal and I think that uh, we can come back uh, over the next uh, point. And then I want to endorse some of the consideration that Sandra made about the complication uh, of the requirements uh, that we are asking for workshop, especially if we split uh, in two categories, the workshop uh, and the plenaries, I think that uh, this will be uh, will help us to make a smoother process. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Giacomo. I, I think that idea uh, is exactly what you described, or intention is exactly what you <coughs> described. So maybe practice uh, is not uh, as good as it is it is intended to be. Uh, but but philosophy is every workshop should every workshop should be on one of the themes or sub themes, and every workshop should feed in the uh, main session on that uh, theme or sub theme. Uh, in practice, maybe that's not so ideal. Uh, Michael, since I've already spoken on this topic, I will be very very quick. This will be a flash intervention. Um, I forgot to mention that I think we should give extra points in the evaluation process for innovative formats. We've talked a lot about that, but uh, by welcoming new up, new ways of doing things, I think will make the conference richer. Twelve years ago, I was uh, in Japan for the uh, INET meeting, and we did a policy slam. And people were given three minutes to stand up and tell us what needed to be done to foster the growth of the Internet and there was a panel of judges with Olympic scoring cards. We had an amazing session, still one of the most memorable sessions I've been to, and some great ideas that led to further discussion. Uh, debates is another option, new types of audience participation with voting. Um, the other thought, uh, two other quick questions. Um, have we considered in the past structuring the agenda so that related topics fall on one or two days? rather than being spread out over four days? Because if we're trying to in, in get people from outside the Internet community to come, they're more likely to come if they see a full program on things they care about in two days rather than spread out over four days. And the last question is, have we shared or collected the data on the attendance from each individual session? Because that certainly would be helpful for me as I decide what topics might be of most interest to the IGF community. And the last thought is on deliverables. Um, I've been fortunate enough to go to Davos for the World Economic Forum. And one of the wonderful things that you come home with after Davos is a set of one-pagers describing each session. They're produced within 24 hours of the session. They're neutral. They're just reporting the big highlights. Incredibly powerful collection of insights. And we might encourage proposals to include thought on doing that kind of one pager. Yeah, I, if um, if I recall correctly, at least from the previous one, that was already required that each organizer of the workshop produce this one pager uh, at the end. Uh, not everybody complied with uh, complied with that request, so that's that is. As a, about workshops, I'm talking about every session. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, this is what I'm what I mean. Every every organizer of every event was requested to provide one pager at the end, and that was not necessarily done. In the World Economic Forum, these are World Economic Forum staff members who are doing that that work. So we, we're slightly in different uh, uh, category. Uh, World Economic Forum has about 400, if not 500, staff members uh, working for them. I think I could help find volunteers to do that. The fact that I've never seen one of those summaries is telling. Okay. Uh, thank you. ICC basis, please.
Thank you, Chair. Uh, first, I should apologize. This morning, I was so busy focusing on remembering who to thank. I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, I'm uh, Chip Sharp from uh, Cisco Systems. Uh, and two items quickly. One is uh, I think to associate with the uh, comment uh, from uh, Constance and ISOC, uh, and willing to work and collaborate on the, uh, her proposal. Uh, second is in the discussions on restructuring and re-architecting the workshops and formats. I'd like to request that the MAG keep in mind a couple of what I think are important principles. One is to maintain the bottom-up nature of the IGF. And the second one is to try to ensure we don't lose the diversity of views, or we should have maximized the diversity of views and, and the, the structure that we come out with. Thank you. So thank you for, for this reminder. Um, now, I call on uh, Phyllis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Phyllis Yilmaz. Um, I'm here uh, on behalf of the technical community. I work as an independent uh, consultant. And uh, while I live in Netherlands, I'm originally from Turkey. So this is uh, very interesting for me to have the meet next meeting in Turkey. Uh, participation uh, is essential for any open public meeting or conference, and so IGF is no different in that. And participation will increase, I believe, if we can have a good meeting with good content. Uh, to achieve this, we need a good selection process as MAG, and uh, it needs to be addressed to be implemented adequately, especially given the limited time frame now. I just found out from you, mid-May, we have to come up with a selected uh, number of workshops. Um, so I support the proposal to work on one such process and uh, come up with an agreement on it uh, before we leave tomorrow. I, I really do support that idea. Uh, transparency was also mentioned by uh, many other members of the MAG and uh, uh, interested people here. And I agree it's a very important issue and uh, we need to address that. Publishing the agreed selection process publicly on the IGF website and addressing blind proposals uh, with the community on why they were uh, declined and um, outlining the basis of final decisions uh, where they, they were lacking uh, which part of the essential criteria we were looking for constructively. I think this will increase the transparency um, in our works. And uh, participation's quality, I also believe, is another angle to pay attention to, not only increasing participation, but having a quality participation realized in the IGF meetings. And uh, I believe quality will increase uh, with the balanced program. Uh, IGF in Bali uh, in 2013 was my first real uh, IGF that I attended in person. And I enjoyed the meeting very, very much. Thank you for that. While I must say the number of workshops uh, challenged me and it, they limited my contribution directly to these uh, workshops because I, I found myself running from one session to another. To that extent, I also support the idea of having limited but uh, focused sessions, uh, focused number of uh, sessions, uh, so that the, the attention of the audience and the participants can be uh, kept on a reasonable and high level. Uh, coming up with different formats, uh, I believe, is also a very good idea, uh, such as tutorials, lightning talks, both uh, creative ideas uh, that we can uh, learn from other uh, conferences, uh, will also help the quality of the program, I believe. Thank you. So thank you for your contribution. Now I call on Virat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, many of the points I wanted to make have already been made, so I'm going to make it very short, three points. Um, I'm going to yield my t time to the next speaker. One, I suppose uh, scores for formats, innovative formats, especially a um, suggestion was made about debates, because that allows not only eight people or ten people to discuss, but interventions, questions, 
and uh, move towards a sort of fairly frank, honest, somewhat fierce dialogue, which then helps people decide their mind rather than sort of polite comments. I think that might be helpful. Um, some scoring for developing country and first time proposals, I think we should find a way to encourage that. I was going to suggest reservations, but that's a bit too far. Um, uh, that might be a little over the top, but I think we need to get a certain minimum number of uh, proposals and want to then mentor them, even if they don't make the cut or are just close to the cut. And finally, I think I sort of uh, uh, associate myself with the comments made by ISOC. I think uh, uh, we should allow them to sort of sort of lead this effort tonight and tomorrow morning and try and come back with some specific suggestions that will help drive the discussion tomorrow on the knowledge agenda and best practices discussion and how that can format itself into the main sessions. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Peter, Peter Major. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me congratulate you on your uh, nomination as interim chair and thank Marcus for his activities uh, as a past interim chair. Uh, I've been listening very attentively to the discussions on the improvements uh, which were uh, suggested here. Uh, some of them were contradictory, but that's, that's the beauty of the whole discussion, that we have contradictory views and uh, probably we come to some consensus. Uh, there was some mentioning about the uh, implementation of the working group on the improvements to the IGF and uh, in more general terms about the uh, extension of the mandate of the IGF and what uh, what are the steps which uh, are ahead of us. So I, I've given some thought that as you may know the Secretary General of the UN United Nations has the obligation to uh, report on the implementation of the recommendations of the uh, CSTD working group on and improvements to the IGF. He was requested last year, uh, I mean he was requested already in 2012 <coughs> and uh, this was reiterated in the resolution last year. So I'm pleased to inform you that uh, uh, the Secretariat, Mr. Chengetai, who can't hear me now, uh, uh, provided the report to the CSTD uh, Secretariat to UNCTAD and it will be in the uh, Secretary General's report for this year General Assembly. Uh, as uh, the following step I think uh, will be that uh, probably the Secretariat will be asked in accordance to the in accordance with the uh, recommendations of the working group to report on the CST the next session in May uh, this year and I expect that this report will be mentioned in the draft resolution of the CSTD uh, which will be followed by the session of the ECOSOC and it will be in the resolution of the ECOSOC on visits follow-up and this will lead us to uh, New York, where probably the second committee is going to deal with that, and finally, as I mentioned, it will be dealt with in the United Nations General Assembly. So we have had already some good news from, from the US, or promising news, rather, uh, that in the previous uh, resolution, the next uh, venues uh, have been already mentioned uh, beyond 2015 which gives us some hope that uh, we are going to have the extension. But probably we have to follow very attentively and very diligently what is going on. And uh, more importantly, we really have to implement the recommendations of the working group. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Peter. I think that this, the last point that you mentioned uh, uh, is uh, written in the terms of reference that uh, we submitted to all uh, MAG members where this is absolute must. Uh, we need to uh, follow those recommendations and implement in every our decision that we will have. 
So last uh, on the list on this uh, item is uh, uh, Council of Europe, and then we will move on af after I will uh, uh, make one, one proposal, actually two. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to um, echo uh, what Paul Wilson has said and Matthew Shears has said before about uh, the, the reference to quality discussions, but I think from that, I, maybe sharing what they say, I'm quite concerned about the, the, the discussion about the number of workshops. I think it's, uh, it's very concerning to limit it so much. Um, I mean, this is a global event. Uh, the, for me, the added value is having discussions, quality discussions, but lots of discussions. Um, and, and that is really the oxygen of, of the IGF. So I'd be very concerned to limit it too much um, and spend time on quality. Um, and just one, one small point, which is, is that we, we, we're all here and we all have lots of expertise and talent in this room to discuss issues, substantive issues. Um, and uh, in terms of narrowing it down and being more specific and focused, uh, it would be a great shame if we leave uh, Geneva without having discussed in a sort of an unmeeting type of a way, really what are the issues based upon the synthesis paper, proposals for 2014, what those, in, in more detail, what those issues are, which narrow topics are we talking about. And just because we have less time this year, I, I would like to propose that uh, for anybody that's interested that uh, we meet uh, tomorrow morning at 8.30 here, if, it, if for anybody interested in an unconference type way and discuss in a bit more detail, drill down the issues that you think should be discussed uh, in a more granular fashion so we can really get to the heart of the uh, of the topics that you want to see covered in IGF 2014. So for those interested, 8.30 8 tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lee, for, for this proposal, and thank you for volunteering, because uh, you're actually reading my mind. I said that I would have two proposals, and uh, those two proposals are, are the following. Seems to me that the decisions which we would need to make by tomorrow evening are, uh, first, what are the themes, sub-themes, uh, we think uh, the um, IGF 2014 should address. That would allow us to formulate the call for proposals on those on those themes. So that is one one thing. And uh, uh, another issue that we need to resolve is what will be the method of selection of those uh, proposals or evaluation and selection. Uh, of those proposals which will come in. So, and I would like to propose that we create two informal sort of groups. One uh, addressing issues of themes, sub-themes. And uh, uh, you just volunteered to maybe to uh, coordinate and, and facilitate a discussion of um, uh, that particular subject uh, and uh, bring uh, preliminary uh, conclusions tomorrow morning to the to the session and another if I if I uh, would ask uh, Suzanne and Fiona volunteer uh, and uh, discuss in an informal way with those who are interested in uh, the methods how we would evaluate proposals which would come in uh, and how we would select uh, the uh, sessions. Also, we need to factor in there were a number of proposals or ideas that we maybe need to uh, diversify formats that we're using and what, what formats we, we have at our disposal. So one is the main session, long main session. And I, I will put aside ceremonial and um, uh, 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 statutory obligations. We will have opening, we will have uh, all, all the uh, necessary uh, protocol uh, things. But I'm talking about substantive things. We have a long uh, uh, plenary sessions, main sessions. We may have shorter main sessions, uh, which are taking place in a bigger room uh, with a potentially bigger audience. We have 
uh, longer workshops, we have shorter workshops. We have longer roundtables, we have shorter roundtables. We have these flash sessions. Uh, we have uh, uh, birds of the feather type of sessions. We have, uh, uh, Mike, you called how they was these three minutes uh, poly slam. slam slam sessions. So all these might be used uh, in the reflection on a type of uh, events we're asking uh, interested uh, people to apply for. So um, if that would be acceptable with these two groups, uh, formation of these two informal groups, and one under Lee's uh, 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 coordinatorship and one under uh, Susan's uh, coordinatorship, and that would inform the debate we will have tomorrow morning. Uh, Vlada. And I just wanted to remind that uh, for the last year we prepared the Google Doc with a list of different formats that can be used. I think I, we shared it on the list, I can share it again. So it can be quite useful to fill that list uh, with, with other ideas of formats so that we have a full palette of different formats and we can attach to various special uh, sessions as, as needed. Thanks. So th thank you. Uh, please do share that uh, uh, list again. And um, uh, Lee, if I may ask you to use uh, the, um, uh, the, as a departing point, uh, this list on the uh, synthesis paper, uh, which have been collected uh, from the inputs of the community already. So uh, thank you. I, I think this was informative discussion. Uh, and that, that discussion was uh, mostly for you not that much for me uh, and we, we had a, a rather uh, diverse proposals uh, here and um, uh, we will uh, continue more structured discussion uh, tomorrow morning. I saw Fiona and Constance. Thank you, Yanis. I think um, I'll talk to Susan and maybe speak for her, but I think we'd be happy to um, take this up. Is there a way to possibly to get a room to meet tomorrow morning, maybe 8.30 or so? I think the meeting starts at 10, but perhaps if we could meet in the morning beforehand. So from, from my previous experience, which uh, ended in 2007, uh, all of these rooms here in Palais are open. Uh, and it is easy to enter. Uh, enter. Uh, what will not be available is the, the microphones and, and facilities, but, uh, but uh, room availability, I think it is uh, uh, relatively easy uh, to arrange. Uh, but but uh, Cengetai will take care, uh, take care of it. Constance, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just for purpose of clarity, the discussion on the best practices forum and uh, a possible track leading to policy outcomes or outcomes of uh, some sort for the IGF. So that discussion would take place in the second working group. Is that is is that it? Uh, I, I, I would ra rather think that in the first on on the on the themes and topics uh, that that would fit in in, in in there in my view at least at this point in time. Marilyn? I'm sorry, Chair. I need to ask a clarifying question. Um, in reading the um, proposal from ISOC, and this is a, an individual comment uh, only, um, while I'm um, highly receptive to the concept that we are addressing, I think there's a lot of work that actually has to be done before we would understand what this how this change could be implemented in a responsible and accountable um, uh, way. So, um, th and this is one of the improvements that was addressed in the um, CSTD working group on improvements to the IGF, and I was one of the five business participants in that two-year um, activity. So I'm very committed to it, but I'm trying to understand the difference between examining the proposal and perhaps and working on modifying it, enhancing it, improving it, evolving it, versus putting it into the first discussion on themes. So I'm just trying to understand where it fits, and I guess I thought it would have been in its own um, own discussion uh, in order to 
be able to deal with questions and perhaps modifications, etc. So I'm seeking clarification. Um, we're, we're talking about the best practice forum, right? We're talking about best best practice forum. So the, uh, the best practice forum would be one one of the streams, and uh, as well as uh, uh, as a regional thread, as well as uh, a governmental thread or ministerial uh, public policy thread, as well as uh, uh, access diversity and so on. So from that from that respect, I think this is at this <coughs> point in time conceptual uh, discussion. What would be those big sort of building blocks uh, what would constitute the architecture of the or structure of the 2014 uh, uh, event and then the other group would discuss uh, how we would get uh, from the proposals evaluation to evaluation and selection of already specific proposals on on uh, whatever type of events we would uh, uh, we would uh, uh, accept to organize or would ask uh, uh, stakeholders to organize uh, at the meeting um, so I I know that procedural debates may uh, uh, last extremely long and I would uh, uh, cut I would like to cut this debate here and, and then leave a little bit of time for a more broad discussion uh, and maybe some information which was requested at the beginning of the meeting. But I see there is a remote uh, uh, comment and this is the last one which I will take at this on this subject. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is a comment from uh, Veronica Kretu who is a MAG member. So um, um, on the IGF and uh, other international global or global initiatives, she, she mentions that it is important to connect with important international networks um, and alliances working in other sectors than internet or um, ICT4D. But for home, internet is a crucial tool for development, like, um, mm -hmm. uh, like global partnership for social ac accountability. All these initiatives um, focus on promoting the internet and uh, bringing citizens closer to the decision-making processes. Um, extending, the, extending the invitation for this year's IGF to leaders of these important international networks would bring an additional value to this year's IGF. Suggestions, um, other, other suggestions, uh, Veronica thinks it's crucial as part of the IGF to keep looking for success stories. Um, so the IGF should uh, provide space and venues for peer exchange, peer learning and knowledge sharing. She supports the idea of having the broader IG, IG community generate ideas for sessions, themes for workshops, uh, as mentioned by Vlada and Henriette. Um, and even if there is uh, already three pages of input from this year's IGF, uh, this, this, um, it might be useful to extend it to the broader community. On the number of workshops, uh, sorry, this is about workshops. A quick, um, a quick comment. Uh, Veronica thinks she we should aim uh, at quality, not at quantity. Uh, however, there has to be a broad spectrum of formats and styles and approaches considered in the context of IGF 2014, from flash sessions to festival area, open corners, open forums, etc. Also, thorny issues should continue uh, being addressed at this year's IGF surveillance versus open governance, open government related initiatives, privacy, etc. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Monique, for, for input. Um, I, th I think uh, we uh, discussed all these things and uh, they will be taken uh, certainly into, into account. So from my part, I promise tomorrow morning uh, to give you a slide with the uh, timetable uh, if we are aiming at uh, uh, mid-May decisions, uh, which I, uh, I promise you will be very tight. Uh, we need also to factor in uh, other events which are uh, already known and which will certainly prevent uh, MAG from uh, functioning properly. So uh, but let, let us discuss that uh, issue tomorrow. 
I will give a uh, floor at the end of the meeting to uh, Lee uh, and Sus Susan uh, to make announcements how they think uh, they would uh, organize work uh, tomorrow morning, most probably, or tonight, uh, whatever you prefer. And now let us let us turn to other uh, point on our agenda. The IGF place in evolving internet uh, governance landscape. And uh, here, uh, maybe as an introduction, uh, I would uh, like just to uh, walk through extremely briefly um, uh, what, what we know and uh, uh, what we don't know. So let me, let me start uh, with the WSIS uh, review. And um, uh, at the end of the day, the decision of the extension of the IGF for next five or ten years will be made uh, at the General Assembly as a result of this uh, process uh, where, um, of course, IGF itself and the MAG uh, can contribute alongside with the other uh, stakeholder community and uh, governments, members of the uh, CSTD, members of ECOSOC and, uh, of course, uh, General Assembly. Um, we are uh, still awaiting uh, the proposal on the modalities of WSIS plus 10 review. As you recall, this, the uh, second committee at the end of last year couldn't agree on modalities and uh, appointed two uh, ambassadors in New York, uh, ambassador of um, uh, Finland and ambassador of Tunisia, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, and they should uh, come up with a consensual proposal by March and uh, that, uh, we hope that uh, the proposal uh, will uh, clarify the final modalities uh, of the process. Uh, that said, uh, we're expecting that in early June ITU will organize the second uh, review event, uh, the one after UNESCO's. Um, and um, uh, that the outcome of that review event uh, will feed uh, into overall this is review process. There will be uh, the regular uh, reporting and examination uh, done by CSTD in upcoming session in mid-May. Uh, uh, Peter already uh, uh, told about it and uh, the decision the decisions of CSTD will uh, be sent to ECOSOC uh, as an input in their deliberations and uh, ultimately to the uh, second committee of General Assembly again uh, in uh, New York at the end of the, of the year. So um, I think every of those um, events or meetings or processes uh, will discuss in one way or another uh, IGF improvements of IGF, outcomes of IGF, impact of IGF to overall sort of uh, um, internet <coughs> governance uh, debate uh, and therefore we need to uh, be uh, ready to contribute in every possible way uh, to inform that debate. Uh, secondly, uh, there are a number of um, events which are uh, exceptional uh, and um, resulted uh, from uh, information we received uh, last uh, year and that triggered a lot of um, uh, debates uh, on the evolution of internet governance uh, in general. So I am uh, here referring uh, to the uh, proposed uh, meeting in, Br in Brazil, Sao Paulo in April. I'm referring to a um, creation of the strat uh, strategy panels within the framework of ICANN, uh, which are uh, about to produce the recommendations uh, to the community uh, that uh, uh, potentially will lead to some decisions of the ICANN board uh, on evolution of uh, ICANN as an uh, organization and the procedures. We are uh, also, uh, we will have uh, two w, uh, ITU events, the World uh, Telecom Policy, no, 
not a development, what was development? Development conference. What Devel is well, development conference? Yeah. Uh, once again. World Telecommunication Development Conference. World Telecommunication Development Conference. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I was a little bit lost uh, in the abbreviations. And we will have a certainly ITU plenipotentiary uh, conference uh, where uh, internet governance issues uh, will be addressed uh, in, uh, uh, in, in depth. So, uh, all that shows how uh, complex the landscape is and uh, now I would like to open the floor uh, for any comments uh, you would like uh, to make uh, on this uh, subject. Subi, Subi. Thank you, Anis. Um, I'm very happy to uh, do a small readout from an informal meeting that we held this morning. Um, about 20 old, not so old, and new MAG members joined us this morning. And we wanted to explore this um, exact same theme, challenge, and look at the crystal ball and see what we as MAG members can do and how is it that we can continue to make the the IGF relevant, responsive, and also vibrant. Uh, there were some excellent suggestions that came from the floor, and um, Paul in particular talked about the efficiency of the IGF and we as MAG members in ensuring responses to important policy questions and issues, and also how is it that the IGF can create more intercessional processes. Um, Chen also talked about, very lucidly, the idea that we need to build consensus in improving the MAG and also being able to respond to questions um, quickly and in, in the manner which is most efficient. Um, and one of the big questions that we wanted to look at is how is it that follow-up mechanisms can be built in. Uh, the breakout groups are a wonderful suggestion. One of the things that evolved organically were these virtual calls that those of us who can't be present uh, raise important issues on the mag and make sure that there is some conversation and an outcome that comes out uh, from these discussions. For us to be able to um, take lead on this conversation and I think it is important that the IGF uh, make use of this time and the space and as the Chinese would say they mean it as a curse but I think it's a fantastic suggestion that we do continue to live in interesting times you just mentioned the full calendar that we have for internet governance this year with many competing events it is ever more important that we make sure that the IGF stays relevant and looks at important discussions and questions. The Sao Paulo meeting is one such um, opportunity to integrate and to feed in and lead conversation on some of these essential questions. So as far as what is it that we want to do and what is it that we can do, between optimism and realism, the middle part that we sort of uh, looked at organically again from the floor is to make sure that we create a list or maybe on the same mag list um, certain suggestions and I think the idea of the best practices that ISOC can propose just like the IETF um, we cannot look at absolute consensus but broad consensus on how is it that the IGF can contribute more in the policy dialogue is an important step forward and I think we as, as a mag are ready to take that leap of faith so that's what I had to say about how we can integrate better and also shape the agenda and the questions and in some of these important meetings. Thank you, Yanis. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, United States. Thank you, Chair. Um, I really just uh, want to echo Subi's comments that um, this is an opportunity, a great opportunity for the IGF to um, <laughs> take its, I guess, rightful place in this calendar. Um, all of these other events that have either existed before but are increasingly dealing with internet governance issues or new events that have come up are, are really in, um, newer to this calendar than the IGF is and we should keep that in mind. I don't think, however, it's, imagine, it's a matter of staying relevant. I think it's a matter of showcasing the IGF and the outputs and, and capturing better, perhaps, the outputs that come out of the IGF and the impact, as we've been discussing today, of the IGF 
um, not only its annual meeting, but the, pro the preparatory process, the fact that it is multi-stakeholder, that it is inclusive, um, and that it is, does evolve, um, as well as um, the national and regional IGFs as, a, as an output. So we just, we need to do a better job of packaging the outputs, and this is a perfect time to do it. So we should really look at this as an opportunity. Um, to do that this year when there's all this other thing, these newer <laughs> aspects swirling around. Um, I just want to make a comment about the UNGA process because um, two things have come up. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful as well, Peter, that the, um, the way the resolution um, this year captured IGF is a portent of an extension. Um, but I just want to clarify that if you haven't read it, there was a caveat put in there, which was a bit unfortunate, that um, for Mexico's hosting of the IGF in 2016, contingent upon the renewal of the mandate. Um, so we're just trying to be a little realistic and show that we do have a, we still have some work ahead, but I remain hopeful as well. Um, and, f and finally, I don't know if whether or not the process uh, with the two co-facilitators to resolve the modalities of the WSIS Plus 10 review will take up the IGF component um, because it was addressed in the resolution that concluded in December, but it is something to watch and, and um, if there is a way to capture it in a positive way, we can do so, but it's very conscripted to the WSIS Plus 10, which may or may not capture IGF. So that's just um, my um, comments based on my participation in the discussions in New York um, at the time. Thank you, Chair. So uh, thank you. Uh, cer certainly will not capture, but with this inform about the modalities of the WSIS review and WSIS uh, reviewing the, the implementation results certainly will refer to IGF because that was one of the outcomes of uh, uh, WSIS. Uh, Marilyn, please. Thank you. My comments are going to address the growing uh, number of um, dialogues, fora, extraordinary events, side events, existing conferences that one may know about where these topics are being addressed and also raise a consideration to fellow MAG members about the importance of our uh, taking a bit of a um, moment ourselves to ensure we have a good understanding of the various processes that um, both affect the IGF and affect um, our ability to um, uh, play a larger role and a more meaningful role. Um, some of these fora are not open and transparent and have limited um, opportunity for stakeholders to even understand the dialogue or, or participate in the dialogues that are going on there. And um, that presents a, a challenge that I will, I will just reference. Um, other fora are being introduced into an already existing, extremely busy landscape, and I think I find, as someone who uh, professionally spends all of my time in this area, I find myself totally overwhelmed by the um, uh, noisiness and the busyness, and I am concerned that we in the MAG may actually miss some critical um, uh, uh, dates and um, um, activities that we need to make sure happen in terms of uh, progressing and under broader understanding and certain other fora. The CSTD is a very critical uh, fora for us, I think, to be aware of in terms of the CSTD Working Group on Enhanced Cooperation, and I'm looking at the chair of that group, Peter Major from Hungary. Um, there are a number of people in the room today, both governments, civil society, and business and technical community who are here today, but we're also just spent the last two days in the WSIS Plus 10 uh, working session where we added yet another four-day working meeting um, to that cycle of work. Um, so I, I'd love to volunteer to work with uh, the Secretariat or anyone else to try to come up with a kind of a bit of a road map of the major events. Uh, and um, uh, uh, even maybe a list of the websites so that people can 
have a calendar and a risk understanding and an understanding of what we should do as the MAG and what we should not do because there are many things that we should not do as the MAG but there are some things we must do. Um, I do think one thing we should, uh, so I'm going to quote my father who um, uh, passed, a former uh, farmer, carpenter from Missouri and my father used to say sometimes it's better to be lucky than good looking we've been thinking that we're not good looking enough at IGF <laughs> and that people aren't aware of what we do and people don't fully understand us and it's hard to get attention on the CEO's calendar or on the minister's calendar well we're lucky we have a crisis to quote some of my former colleagues and now internet governance is on the lips of heads of state it's being discussed at the UNGA CEOs are asking about it. Hey, I can have a conversation on a, on a train or an elevator about internet governance. So I think it is vitally important that we take advantage of the, um, uh, the luck that has come our way and um, harness the energy, but also understand that's going to mean a lot of additional work for us to make sure that we both do the program and we also address uh, in an effective way some of the challenges about the role of the IGF in the larger ecosystem. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Um, let, me, let me just uh, remind ourselves uh, the purpose why IGF was created. Um, it was, it was created uh, to discuss issues, uh, to learn, to understand, and to bring back knowledge to the places where decisions should be made. I, I think that this is a very important issue because the worst thing that one can do is to take badly informed decisions without understanding of different aspects of the issue. And I, I don't think that IGF should shy away from that primary function. I'm not uh, suggesting that uh, uh, IGF should not change. I think that only uh, those who change survive in the longer run because environment evolves and every institution and every process should evolve together with the environment. Uh, but the primary function, uh, we always need to keep that in mind. We also need to keep in mind that uh, already in WSIS it was agreed by everybody that there, is an, there isn't a single place, there, is, there isn't a single institution where internet governance issues should be or could be discussed. So this is a highly um, sort of diversified uh, landscape and every element of that landscape is in charge of some thing, bigger thing or smaller thing. And uh, we need uh, to, to create that platform where all these different elements come together and meet each other. So that is the added value of this, of this forum. And I, and I think uh, that that should be sufficiently appealing uh, to CEOs and ministers uh, to, to come and, and uh, contribute to that uh, town hall meeting as it was uh, 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 proposed. It is just a reminder of the history. Uh, Vlada, please. Now it's your turn. Thank you, Yanis. And for the reminder, which is very valuable. Uh, adding on, on, on what uh, Marilyn said with the complexity of, and you also listed the number of fora, uh, I recently blogged, tried to summarize something of that I shared on, on the list, I can share again. Uh, but besides the, the list that you mentioned, we also have a OneNet initiative. We have this Global Commission on Internet Governance chaired by Carbilt. We have a Freedom Online Conference. We have a JIPO, which is by the European Commission. We recently have a Swiss-initiated Geneva Internet Platform, which basically w wants to assist the developing countries, especially the missions in Geneva, to grasp this complexity of, of uh, fora through regular monthly me briefings, through capacity building initiatives and uh, a June conference about the IGR architecture uh, in future and so on, follow up to Brazil and what's happening with the IGF and versus plus 10 and so on. So 
the point is there is a, a bunch of fora, but I believe that in fact it can only help IGF to be strengthened if we act smart, smartly, of course, because the IGF is the, in a way, the unique, credible, and, and legitimate, uh, so to speak, UN space where we can talk about IGF. And uh, a good example that Henriette mentioned earlier this morning is that in Bali we, we discussed at the IGF, we discussed the Brazil meeting. So we should try to enforce more on that to give IGF a space or a place within the other fora. Now this links exactly to the agenda point uh, of, of this meeting, which is links with the other fora. And the fortunate thing is that within a number of these fora, like one at Global Commission, uh, JIPO, JIPO, whatever, uh, there is a, a number of MAG members also which are in these committees, in the ICANN High Level Committee and, and others. So there is a natural link, fortunately, already between the IGF and, and these fora, and we should use it. And hopefully these MAG members will try to make the connection. But there is another important aspect, which is uh, former links with the, with the UN, other UN institutions, including the CSTD, ITU process, well, also the link with the ICANN, where we definitely need a special advisor or executive coordinator. And I, I really want to re emphasize that and probably pose a question maybe back to you, if you have any more information, and you and Dessa also, what's happening with appointing the special advisor and executive coordinator, because we need them desperately for also the links with the other, with the other uh, uh, fora. Uh, and to conclude, I believe that the IGF, exactly as you said, can be this kind of uh, of a cook uh, working in the kitchen, preparing a menu of different challenges and best practices, and then offering it to different organizations if they want to follow up in their field of, of work. We should use that opportunity. Thanks. So thank, thank you, uh, Vlada. Uh, do we have a remote comment? Yes, thank you. Uh, Marila uh, Mar Maciel would like to, to make the following co comment. The fact that most actors take into account the IGF as an integral part of their model for institutional empowerment shows the value of the forum to the community. This should be taken into account by the UN United Nations General Assembly when they make a decision on main mandate renewal. But most of the actors also mention that for the IGF to be able to play this role, it should be strengthened and improved. The current model with little outcomes is not fulfilling IGF's purpose. Concrete improvements need to happen this year in the, in the IGF if the IGF is to have a place in the internet ecosystem. Thank you. So thank, thank you very much for this comment. Uh, I have um, a following uh, request for the floor from uh, Carolina from European Commission from um, MSC Sergius, from Patrick, Ms. Chen, uh, UNEC, Henriette, uh, Bill Drake. Uh, we have uh, 45 minutes remaining for, for today's session. And uh, I will see if uh, Vyacheslav is ready to answer a question, uh, a recurring question about uh, Special Advisor and Executive Secretary. Please, sir. if you're ready. Mr. Chair, thank you very much. And uh, mm, prior addressing this uh, issue, so that I also would like to echo the previous information about this uh, United Nations resolution, so that for your reference, you can put this uh, A slash RES slash 88 slash 198 so that this resolution uh, expressed a big appreciation to the uh, IGF and uh, the host countries and as well as uh, uh, welcome the offer from uh, Turkey, Brazil and uh, Mexico with uh, saying that it's uh, um, subject of the renewal of the mandate of IGF. So um, actually the members of the second committee uh, who participated in the discussion of this resolution and adopting this resolution also been informed um, about the uh, importance uh, to adopt uh, the, and discuss the future IGF as soon as possible. So they taking into consideration the previous uh, experience that uh, we got 
that the resolution was adopted in the last moment and it was a very strong negative impact on the process of uh, with the IGF so that um, um, so that I brief the uh, participants of the second committee about this uh, situation in the past and I believe so that this is what uh, result that we have this uh, 2016 mentioned so that even the resolution has not been yet adopted uh, for the for the for the discussion for the future uh, of the IGF uh, with respect of the uh, this question that everybody is very much interesting what is the status of the uh, special advisor so that I would like to inform you that uh, um, uh, we receive a number of the proposals uh, for the uh, post of the special advisor on the internet governance to the secretary general and uh, uh, within this entire list so that uh, uh, the most welcome one is uh, the chair of the MEG meeting so that then it was the um, result of this um, so that we have the intensive consultations um, from the United Nations and uh, um, the government of Latvia and uh, Yanis about the um, some uh, legal aspects uh, and relationship between the uh, special advisor and the United Nations uh, which uh, political um, willingness and the political agreement does exist among the all member states and is within the uh, internet governance community so therefore now um, the um, <coughs> process is ongoing and uh, we are waiting for the um, feedback and uh, information from uh, um, the government of Latvia and uh, Yanis himself. With respect of the executive, uh, the executive coordinator, as we just mentioned you before, so that we initiated the uh, process of the hiring executive coordinator, um, I believe like a couple years ago. However, so that we were forced uh, to close this uh, announcement of the process due to the lack of the fundings. And uh, unfortunately, the situation with the budget uh, appropriation for the opening this uh, uh, post again is still uh, in question and uh, we definitely appreciate the uh, support uh, from the donor community to be able to launch this process again if the funds are available so that uh, as you might aware so that we are going to have uh, the regular donor meeting that we have during the MAC uh, meetings <coughs> and uh, this year is going to take place on Friday and I believe so that this uh, uh, issue of the uh, sustainable funding for the IGF Secretariat and the uh, Trust Fund from which the IGF Secretariat is funding is going to be discussed again and uh, it's one of the um, big issue for everybody to um, have the sustainable financial mechanism uh, for the IGF Trust Fund um, and uh, how this mechanism to be implemented uh, it's uh, one of the <coughs> crucial point which is going to be discussed from our side as you're aware so that we are doing everything what is possible so that we also initiated a number of the initiative from our side to bring you know the highest attention from the United Nations uh, senior management to the bringing uh, attention to the needs of the IGF Trust Fund, um, including the various type of the donors meeting, which already right now took place not only during the MEG meetings for IGF and also outside the framework of the uh, regular events and activities uh, of MEG and the IGF uh, forums. So thank, thank you, uh, for this clarification. So I'm uh, coming back to the list of speakers and I call on uh, Carolina. Well, actually it's uh, Christina <laughs> from the European Commission. Um, Acker. Ah, sorry. Yep. Yeah, okay. I have a bit of a problem with my mic. Um, <laughs> Yes, um, I wanted to say that um, I, I 
I completely um, agree with uh, with uh, Janice and his perception. I mean, the the mandate that the um, IGF has. I mean, it is very clearly defined uh, in the Tunis agenda. I I also think that uh, Vlada's uh, diagnosis of of uh, where the IGF stands with respect to other. Um, Internet gover governance uh, meetings, venues, conferences, working groups uh, is, is very relevant. The, the IGF um, currently um, is, and, and our Br Brazilian colleague Marília Maciel, she just made a, a quite an interesting um, comment uh, saying, okay, the, the IGF is, is a valid uh, place to discuss internet governance issues, but it's still, it's, it still has a problem with outcomes. So. Um, Going back to some reflections that we've had in, in previous IGFs, uh, we do know that the IGF is the, is the f global forum and it has a very uh, specific and important um, agenda setting function. Uh, and I would like to say that we, the forum even has a, like a pre-agenda setting function. It is a very creative space for uh, the policy process. Um, and um, if we go forward with a Marilyn Cade's proposal of maybe having a calendar of events, but even going a bit a step further and elaborating a matrix on what the current events on internet governance are for 2014, what are its objectives, its main audiences, I mean, how do these people have to participate, etc. Then we will realize that the IGF, we will have it really materialized, that the IGF has its very specific domain space. It has its core values that it has promoted uh, and, and the, the history of it existen its existence uh, have validated the, this uh, experience. So I, I do think that it is an exercise that um, w we could do and I volunteer to, to help start producing that kind of matrix kind of work to see where the IGF is currently fitting in this whole um, ecosystem. And, um, and in that respect, I think that we as MAC members, we do have a responsibility to liaise with as many people as possible in these other uh, meetings and working groups. Some of those working groups uh, will, are providing uh, and will provide really valuable uh, output that should be used in our sessions, in our discussions at the IGF. So we should really be careful of inviting these people, of trying to promote uh, they're joining in, in our effort and coming uh, to, to Istanbul in September. And, and that is really, I think, a, a, a personal task that we as MAG members, we have to sort of uh, work uh, in that direction. Thank you. So now I'm calling to uh, represent the European Commission, Christina. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I join the other participants also in congratulating you for, for your appointment. Uh, I didn't want to comment on the format and the specific issues that are being addressed uh, very well by the MAG members who are very engaged and very active uh, from what I can see from uh, the conversation on the mailing list. So I felt that my comments were more relevant um, to this point on the agenda. Uh, I think we all agree that we are witnessing uh, important movements in the global discussions around internet governance. Uh, the European Commission continues to be in favor of a multi-stakeholder model for internet governance and uh, it has set as its objective to bridge uh, the gap and find workable solutions and the IGF has a special value in this context. Um, we believe in the need of a more inclusive dialogue with all players including those with, with very different ideas from ours and more capacity and confidence building to ensure everyone sees the benefits of a bottom-up, multi-stakeholder and inclusive approach to the governance of the Internet. Um, last week, uh, the European Commission adopted a communication on Internet policy and governance with the title Europe's role in shaping the future of the Internet. And uh, we believe this is an important contribution to the global debate on internet governance. Now this communication is open for discussion in the European Parliament and by the member states, but we are confident that it will be the basis for developing common ground and facilitate discussions in other fora on the global scene to which we are very attentive. Um, the communication clearly states uh, that the Commission will engage with stakeholders to strengthen the Internet Governance Forum, taking account of the recommendations of the Working Group on Improvements of the IGF. 
We put great value in the IGF as a platform to facilitate forward-looking discussions among all stakeholders, many of whom had not cooperated closely before. So uh, it is important, however, uh, and we said this uh, in the past or already, but we feel that maybe now the time are really more mature, um, we, we feel that the IGF needs to improve the quality and the format of, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the quality and the outcomes it produces, also to enhance its impact on the global internet governance uh, scene. Uh, so the European Commission is an active supporter of the IGF and is committed to contributing in making it a real success. Thank you. So thank you, thank you very much for uh, this, these remarks and, and then support of uh, European Commission to IGF. Thank you. Uh, now I call on uh, MSC Besergius, if I pronounced correctly. <laughs> Thank you, Janice. Uh, my name is MSC Besergius, and I, um, I work with MTN Nigeria. Uh, I, I'm going to talk about the relevance. Um, of the IGF globally and um, the, the involvement of government in IGF programs. I was going to ask initially, um, in relation to local and regional IGF programs, especially in developing nations, you know, the, how does the Secretariat provide support in ensuring proper stakeholder alignment and the discuss of relevant local issues? Again, I am aware that uh, everybody here has agreed that government participation is key come September 2014, and I'm equally aware that there are a lot of um, local, uh, regional, local and regional IGF programs coming up shortly before the September event. And I was going to say that uh, it would be proper and um, very good for us to, for the Secretariat to lend support to the local programs in sensitizing government and other wider stakeholder, uh, private sector stakeholder, you know, towards the September event. If we're able to do that, um, Say, for example, I know that Nigeria has a program planned uh, sometime around June. If there's a proper uh, uh, stakeholder sensitization, I think there will be meaningful, uh, meaningful private sec sector stakeholder in involvement and government involvement come September. Thank you. So thank you for your comments now, Patrick. Thank you. On the discussion that we had earlier, I thought was very useful about the time frame of the IGF and the potential renewal of it. This is a topic I think is uh, really important for us to consider and to consider deeply. The five-year mission that the IGF initially started out with was very similar to the five-year mission that, this, that the Starship Enterprise started out with at one time. Uh, they were loaded up with 430 crew and enough food uh, to embark on its mission, and then it would come back and then reload on another mission. Um, and then ultimately, uh, because of the success, the, uh, the Star, uh, Star Trek Next Generation uh, started stopped talking about a five-year mission and started talking about a continuing mission. Um, and uh, I believe that no good internet conference is, is a success unless there's a reference at least once to Star Trek and to Star Wars. And so I've, uh, I've at least made one of those references. But uh, we do need to, I think, think about this less as a mission, as a temporary mission of five years that's renewed, and more as an ongoing ongoing project uh, and it's frustrating for those of us that are um, you know that are not part of governments because it's not anything that we can directly influence the ability to draft a resolution and to propose a longer term solution for the IGF rests solely in the hands of governments that can make that proposal and in the hands of the United Nations together and so I would ask that all of us really look at that very carefully uh, I was interested to hear about the option of a 10-year mission and 10 years is good in, in one sense because it's twice as long as five, but it's still a self-limited mission. And I see no reason for us to put our, you know, put brakes on, on anything we do before we even get started. Uh, there's certainly ways to be able to draft the resolution or to be able to think about this uh, and to present the whole mission of the IGF as a way that's constantly reviewed and could be subject to cancellation. But again, term limiting before we even get started is, is not a model for long-term planning and success. Um, my, uh, my, my final 
comment and then question is, is, for, is for Slava. There are, um, one of the great developments I think in the past few months has been the agreement by uh, the United Nations to uh, host an open session this coming Friday on, the, uh, on, on finance. And so I wanted to make sure that everybody here is aware that there is an open session available from 9.30 to 11 o'clock on Friday and there will be uh, some remote participation opportunities available for those that would like to listen in. And I don't know if those have been shared yet, but I wanted to ask Slava uh, if he could uh, share with us how the, um, how the participants here might be able to join in on that conversation. So thank, uh, thank you, Patrick, uh, for uh, ref reference to Star Wars and, and the permanent mission. I know that, that that is Star Trek. Sorry, uh, I think I know that this this is the uh, subject which is very close to heart of your boss, um, Miss Chen. Thank you, Miss Chen. Actually, this is the topic uh, seem, uh, most interesting to me <laughs> personally. Uh, Based on my humble experience of two-year membership here, I would like to share my observations and some of my thoughts about the uh, possible options and the, uh, the necessity as well as the possible options uh, for further improvement of IGF. As we all know that uh, there are a lot of new fora, meetings, uh, venues, uh, appearing or emerging on internet co governance. But to, and it seems they are competing with us, with IGF. But for me, I do not see they are competing with each other. Uh, actually, we should make our I IGF and uh, other uh, meetings and forums mutually uh, complementary to each other. We should the, the job for us is to find the strength, the core value of IGF, and then find the potential uh, potentials of IGF and give full play to its potential. And for me, the strength of IGF lies uh, lies in two points. First is official status. It is the only official uh, forum within the UN system to deal with or which is specifically tailored for discussion about public policies about internet governance. So this is one. The second uh, element is the broadness or potential broadness of our topics. Because according to the uh, Tunisia agenda, uh, IGF is mandated to discuss public policy issues related to key elements of internet governance. That is a very broad authorization, a broad man mandate. And it is up to us, it is for us to uh, find the right uh, topics or attractive topics which uh, make our IGF uh, more, seems more helpful or useful to the users or to other people, to the public. Since we are a member or a meeting or forum uh, within the UN system, I think we should, uh, whenever we uh, organize our work, we should consider the priorities of the UN organization. We should not go astray from the main theme or the main task of the organization. And now it seems on the table of the Secretary General that the post-2015 uh, development agenda is a priority. This actually, internet can play a very important role in this respect. We should talk about this issue. This issue will be very, very, uh, oh, I mean, welcomed by all the public and all sectors. We can talk about the roles of internet in promoting the realization or materialization of MDG. We can also talk about Internet's role in helping the uh, LDC's development. We can also about talk about uh, its its uh, role in promoting human rights, as well as peace and security. I think 
this is also uh, committee one uh, of the General Assembly are dealing with this topic. But I think IGF, there's no rule forbidding or prohibit us from doing that, from talking about uh, the, the, the peace or security issues. So, I mean, it's, we, we, if we can concentrate, uh, we can choose the right topics and highlight the prioritized topics, surely it can enhance the attractiveness of IGF. The second point or suggestion is the outcome. Many people have mentioned that we are losing attractiveness is just because we are, we are not producing any tangible results or non everything we discussed or the outcomes are non-binding. Yeah, it is true that this is the uh, mandate. It is the, uh, how to say, boundary of uh, our authority. But, we, but that doesn't mean we cannot do anything. We can do something like the suggestions. I'm very happy to see that uh, some of the public inputs have proposed that we can, IGF can develop some non-binding opinions or recommendations or policy principles on certain topics. So in this way, I think the outcomes of IGF would be very useful to different sectors. That would also raise the attractiveness of, uh, of IGF. And I hope that we can, if we follow this line of uh, thought, I mean, we can explore more areas which will be very helpful to strengthen the role of IGF uh, on the international arena. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So thank, thank you, Mr. Chen, for your contribution. I, I, I could subscribe uh, almost everything you said. Uh, indeed, you're, you're, you're really uh, saying uh, very pertinent things about our role and, and, and what we should do and, and also where our limitations. One of the limitations is three days. And in three days, you cannot discuss the whole range of uh, uh, Internet governance-related issues. So therefore, uh, the MAG was created to identify those uh, topics, themes, sub-themes, which are uh, important at every given moment. And as you know, that there is no taboo in IGF on addressing any issue. I remember the first IGF, the hot potato, was uh, critical Internet resources. It was discussed. And uh, uh, we see that there has been a number of developments since 2006 until today. Uh, and uh, then three years later, Internet Critical Resources session was one of the most boring sessions in, in, in that particular year because there was not really uh, any topic which was really uh, at the top of the agenda at that particular time. So this year, again seems that critical internet resources may become one of the interesting issues to, to discuss and and then things are in preparation so everything is, is is changing and mag role is to identify what is topical this particular time which needs to be addressed in in, in IGF. so now i call to uh, economic uh, commission for africa makana please thank you uh, mr chair uh, to improve the IGF operation and make ourselves uh, more relevant, I believe that we need to put emphasis on, the, on our stakeholders' uh, concerns. Uh, to build on the knowledge gained by the stakeholders, knowledge exchange as indicated by our colleague from India earlier. Accordingly, uh, we think that there is need to find means of working on best practices involving key aspects of the information and knowledge society, starting from the national, going to the regional, up to the global level. Also, we need to speak a language which can be understood by policymakers, as most of our policymakers in charge of the information society issues are not IT engineers, and hence will consider our talks too technical and without interest to them, like what uh, Marilyn has indicated, and also like you, our chair, you have indicated. Furthermore, maybe we need to consider, as suggested by ISOC, non-policy binding outcomes to be channeled on layman's way, uh, something which is understood and understandable 
from uh, the global to the uh, national levels. Finally, we have a lot of stakeholders who would like to participate, but unfortunately are not able to take part due to a lot of reasons. In this connection, we may need to put emphasis on real e-participation by putting in place the necessary human, financial and technical resources needed in order to enlist most of our stakeholders who would like to participate to face-to-face -face meetings but cannot do it. Thank you, Chair. So thank, thank you, Nakane, for your contribution. Now I call on Henriette. Um, thank you, Yanis. Um, I, I want to go back to your earlier remarks about the mandate of the IJF and really say I could not agree with you more. And I, I'm really, um, I'm really pleased that you you emphasise that because I think that is the primary role of the IGF, is as a space for dialogue and debate. And I think that the reason or the, the purpose of increased public um, dialogue and debate is to democratize and improve governance. And I think that is one of the great values of the IGF. And um, we need to strengthen that. I think we need to strengthen, as has been said, the link between the IGF and other UN forums and other um, decision-making bodies. And I think the points made by Marilyn and others that we need capacity within the Secretariat for the IGF to be present and participate in these forums. And we also need the outcomes of the IGF or, the, or, or of the dialogue at the IGF to be packaged in a way that makes it easier to feed the discussion from the IGF into those spaces. And these are all points that are made in the CSTD working group. Um, I think I agree, I support the idea, uh, Makan and others, um, um, Isok, Chen, of um, producing more outcomes, having voluntary adoption of certain positions. I'm not opposed to that at all. I think it's a good idea, um, particularly when it comes to broad-based macro issues such as principles for internet governance. But I would caution against um, transforming the IGF into a policy making or even a concrete outcome oriented forum. You know, with all due respects to developing countries and others who have emphasized this, I'm from a developing country, I've been working with developing country governments for many years and I've participated in many events that make decisions, that make policy recommendations that are then simply not implemented. Um, working, col collaborating with UNECA, we had an excellent African Internet Governance Forum last year. We produced a fantastic outcome document. But what is the status of that outcome document? Ultimately, governments do what they do. And there are intergovernmental decision-making spaces. And um, I think the value of the IGF is that without that burden of reaching consensus, we can engage in all these issues um, in one forum. And I think best practice and knowledge exchange is a key part of that. And I agree with Makan um, from UNEC. I think how what language we use and how we package those, those knowledge sharing is very important. But I don't think we should let the continuation of the IGF be held hostage by whether it produces outcomes or not. As Patrick was saying, um, what we really need, and by the way, Patrick, I think we should be at the deep space nine stage by, by now. Um, uh, I think what we want from governments is to commit to the IGF, not because it's producing outcomes, but because governments are committed to more democracy and more engagement and more public debate. And you know, that's what I really would like us um, to see. But now, just a concrete proposal for Istanbul, and I'm not sure if it was made already. The audio was quite poor for a while. Plus, these people back here talk all the time. Um, is that if we could have a main session um, at the Istanbul IGF, where all these key events that Jan has outlined this year could actually report their outcomes. So that would be um, the Brazil meeting on the future of internet governance, CSTD working group on enhanced cooperation, WSIS plus 10, post-2015 development agenda. And if they can um, feed into a main session to the IGF community and get some, some, some uh, responses from the broader IGF community on their, where they are at in terms of their decision-making processes and future processes, I think that would be a very useful um, um, activity and it would also strongly position the IGF as a unique, I think to quote Vlada, a unique and legitimate space 
for, for um, dialogue and debate on internet governance issues. So thank you, Henriette, for, for this contribution. Uh, we have about uh, 15 minutes to the end of the session. We have a long list of uh, uh, people asking for the floor. Uh, we will go until the end, and then we will resume maybe a little bit uh, tomorrow morning. Please don't, don't uh, worry if uh, uh, you will not be able to speak on this topic uh, today. Uh, now I call on Bill Drake, please. Bill. Okay, sorry you're on my list. I'm taking it uh, uh, further. Uh, Lorenzo. If you would introduce yourself. Preston. Okay. Lorenzo Pupillo, uh, Telecom Italia. Um, I would like to bring uh, the the view of some of the telecom operators. For us, uh, um, last year in Bali, I mean for Telecom Italia, but also for some other um, group of operators like Etno, also GSMA, uh, the active participation to AGF was uh, uh, the first time in Bali. We were able to present some uh, uh, workshops. And uh, by the way, I'd like to uh, thanks also Marcus because he helped me a lot in uh, getting through all the process and of course I have to uh, congratulate so the chairman for his uh, election and uh, for us it was an extremely positive experience and, um, and uh, we really um, appreciate the, the role the IGF play as a, a place to discuss in a very inclusive uh, way uh, very also unconventional and un unconventional way all the uh, topics that related to internet governance uh, but so this experience should uh, uh, continue should be make uh, uh, should be made strong and um, uh, i think we have a i would a couple of suggestions one is uh, uh, i won't take on what has been said regarding the outcome of the of the forum uh, I know that uh, uh, IGF is not conceived as a political uh, policy body, uh, but I think that uh, because there are, basically the IGF is an incubator of ideas, so I like to say that we should find some type of, uh, not technology transfer, but idea transfers, implement to some extent this idea, because why, you know, all of us see that, uh, for instance, we found in the let's say in the marketplace that would be like the other uh, institution that talk about internet governance, some ideas like uh, three, four years later. Why maybe do not speed up this process of idea transfer? And so I think that uh, we should find the way to do that. For instance, on this matter, I think that uh, some uh, ideas like the European Commission JIPO uh, platform can be very helpful on that because uh, should be like a, a repository but also some type uh, should be should uh, have uh, some analytical tool that can help to, to streamline the wording the main ideas coming out from the from the from the IGF so the idea of mainstreaming some of this idea is extremely important the other issue is I think how the global IGF is related to the to the national the regional IGF. I find a lot of variation on this. There are uh, some uh, countries that do not do national IGF, then there are uh, regions that do regional IGF. So I think this something should be maybe should be made more uh, uh, formal. In, in other words, uh, uh, there should be some type of bottom-up approach that can, should be make stronger the IGF. Thank you. So thank you, thank you for your uh, proposals and certainly interest. We're very glad that uh, telecom operators uh, joined the, the sort of the, the forum because that is a unique perspective that you bring to the discussion, which was absent uh, beforehand. So now I call on Maria Victoria Romero. I'm not sure which is the right how you're usually called because you have uh, three names to choose from. <laughs> Please. Mr. Chair, I, I take the opportunity to, to congratulate you on your appointment. I know it's almost closing time, but I uh, didn't want to leave this opportunity and also express our gratitude to, to Marcus that uh, 
we haven't been here in this forum before uh, in the capacity of a MAC member, but uh, we know his um, experience and his contribution to the process. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to make a, a point on the participation of developing countries in the process. And much has been said about the, the lack of participation and the lack of, uh, of presence of, of the countries. And speaking on behalf of uh, one of uh, one country, I can I can see that uh, uh, we we realize there are uh, parallel processes. One in the decision making bodies, which is uh, with the governments, and the other one in a forum like uh, IGF, where where it's. Uh, stakeholders um, mode, mode and uh, we don't see that there is a, um, a certain equilibrium in the in the participation and here in Geneva uh, it's a pity that we have this uh, Geneva is a kind of hub of the uh, for different stakeholders and we could take advantage of that one of the colleagues before said that uh, the Swiss um, initiative of having this uh, internet uh, governance platform is which is a very good tool in order to bring more uh, developing countries in general countries but uh, especially or particularly developing countries and uh, in the end of the day the, these um, governments will make a decision in uh, of the future of IGF in the General Assembly where not all the participants in, in this floor will be represented so it's extremely important that we continue this outreaching uh, from from this um, meeting to outside and to colleagues here in Geneva, and uh, also we um, offer our support to do that and to contribute to to really strengthen the, the participation and the presence of uh, IGF and the, this group, the MAC, in in these processes that are going to be held in different parts of the world, and especially the. Uh, governmental ones in uh, the CSTD and ECOSOC and later on in the General Assembly. Thank you very much. So thank you. Uh, now I call on uh, Jen Dong. I'm Shadong Lee from CENIC, the DOS Registry. Uh, I'm new MAC members from China and uh, elected by the Internet Technical Community. Firstly, I also want to express my sincere con congratulations to you, Yanis, for your appointment of the interim chair. And I also want to suggest us to pay more, much more attention to what happened globally on the Internet governance issues. I think we need to investigate the most important progress in the world uh, and what will be happening in this year. I think, for example, the ICANN internationalization and also the Brazil in the internet governance meetings, and also other regional and also some country, uh, country meetings, and to discover what kind of influence they will bring to the uh, IGF. I think so I have joined uh, four of the eight past IGF meetings. I, I enjoyed the meeting, but uh, totally confused of many workshops because there are too many workshops to attend. I also support the suggestions to limit numbers of workshops and focus on the critical issues. I think uh, I also suggest the IGF to have good publications on meeting outcomes or achievements. I think it's, a summary is necessary, but how to spread it, it is the key point, especially in different language. It will be very helpful to attract the community members during the IGF activities and make contribution to this forum and use the concept of best current practice for their own governance issues. Thank you. So thank you, thank you for your uh, proposals and, and welcome to the, to the MAG. Uh, now I call on Olga, Olga Cavalli. Thank you, Chair. Um, many of the concepts have been already addressed by my colleagues. I, I would just like to say that for governments, as a, as a representative of the government of Argentina, the multi-stakeholder process is the real value. Sometimes governments don't have the opportunity to interact with other stakeholders in a 
in an equal footing space and and i think this is the value of the igf there may be other fora but the igf is the main global fora forum for internet governance exchange of ideas and experiences and and the the val the outcomes may be and i i agree with Henriette in this point the outcomes may be valuable or not the the, the real value is what can you learn from your colleagues and what can, can you bring home when you when you finish some of the things have already been said i would like to point the fact that isoc has a very interesting uh, calendar maybe uh, constance can share it with us and we can enhance that calendar with other events and make it more complete and also european commission has this jipo uh, platform that i think it will be very uh, useful thank you uh, thank you. Uh, now I call on Tovella. Thank you, Chair, for your indulgence in giving me the floor. I just wanted to make a comment briefly about the whole idea of this role of the IGF um, in the evolving landscape. I think when you look at um, how the IGF is currently positioned, it is probably the only forum that is um, the most connected to all of these different initiatives that are happening. And that connection happens through the issues, through the people, through the institutions that are participating. And I think that I concur with those that have said that this is the time for us to now be opportunistic in terms of trying to see how we're actually going to leverage um, that connectedness to all these different events. And so for me, I think that there are two questions that are sitting in my mind. Um, the first of which is that what messages can the IGF actually send um, to these various um, events and for other forums and how. And then the second question is that how will the IGF um, use the messages that come out of these other events um, to inform its work? Thank you, Chair. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I still have five uh, speakers on my list um, and I'm, I'm uh, calling them out. Virat, Jivan, Mathieu, Robert and Vlada. Uh, but we are really at the end of uh, today's uh, session and as I mentioned uh, we would uh, maybe continue uh, tomorrow morning or is there anybody who may not be tomorrow morning in the room out of those five I mentioned okay so then then we will uh, continue tomorrow morning uh, since we're approaching uh, six o'clock uh, before uh, adjourning this um, uh, meeting I would like to maybe propose uh, two things uh, uh, to uh, uh, for you f to reflect uh, over uh, over this evening and and uh, come back tomorrow with them uh, with uh, some um, uh, proposals or, or reactions so that there, there uh, usually IGF is criticized that uh, it is just a talk show and nothing uh, is, is happening. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, referring to history of this uh, uh, platform or creation of this platform, it was not uh, intended uh, to produce any uh, sort of decisions. But it was uh, created to discuss and then uh, make decisions in the places where they should uh, be made. And uh, what is the missing element, in my view, in all these debates is the information, what decisions have been made as a result of discussions in IGF. And uh, I would like to propose uh, to, to think about idea of um, uh, producing for every IGF session a, a kind of a, a report. And I'm not speaking about lengthy report, I'm speaking about one, two pages in a bullet point style, what decisions has been made by relevant organizations, uh, let's say, as a result of discussions in IGF. And if we would take a period of uh, two years, uh, Baku IGF and uh, Bali IGF, and uh, uh, we would call on relevant organizations to provide us on voluntary basis very brief information, what decisions has been made. Uh, on the topics which uh, they brought to IGF or they learn uh, at the IGF uh, and we would compile that, uh, Secretariat would compile that uh, uh, information and would um, 
bring it to attention of delegates at the beginning of every next uh, IGF session. I think that would inform and would maybe uh, trans, uh, transform the perception that nothing is happening as a result of IGF. Uh, I think that many things happen. We simply are not fully aware uh, what is happening where and how IGF impacted that um, uh, session. This, the second is about the uh, potential outcomes uh, or uh, let's say how we bring the, the, uh, the work which we discuss forward. And here, uh, of course, we re uh, recall all of us that at the, at the first IGF in Athens, a number of uh, dynamic coalitions have been created and uh, not many of them have met the expectations which uh, we placed uh, in, uh, on, on them. And the question is why? Why the intercessional work mechanism which was created uh, in the first IGF and which we're, we're recurrently coming back in, in discussions as a weakness of IGF uh, haven't produced expected results? So if we could, if you could think over those those two things, and maybe at one point tomorrow we could have a exchange, or in the discussions tomorrow you you bring maybe your thoughts uh, on these issues um, uh, to the uh, to the table. So that brings us to the end of, of today's session. I thank interpreters for helping us uh, to uh, understand each other better. Uh, and we have now information from Secretariat, uh, the rooms uh, for informal meetings tomorrow are uh, available the following, uh, room 21 and room 22, those are huge ones, the big ones, are available. And then uh, room uh, 3006, which would uh, contain uh, about um, 12 to 16. Uh, seats and room 3025 which would contain about 15 to 20 people are available as well so and now I'm turning to uh, facilitators uh, with uh, uh, for announcement which room they would choose Suzanne you, s you start first hey, sorry um, just a quick question um, would any of the smaller rooms happen to have a whiteboard or paper in an easel? <laughs> Would we be so lucky? Okay, let me let me give a try. While we're trying to uh, okay. uh, s seek seek a clarification, now I'm turning to to Lee, uh, on, on maybe you will tell us which room you would choose. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But that depends upon demand, doesn't it, really? It depends how many people would like to take part tomorrow morning. How many people would like to go to each? Well, who'd like to go to my session? Okay, the question, session. question is, uh, who would like to go to session, informal consultations on the uh, themes, sub-themes? Why don't you stand up? It's better, because it, it's a blur. No, it's, it's really, it's, it's also a little bit of gymnastics. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, about twenty. Can I, can I take the last room then, the room for twenty twenty-five? So that that room has a whiteboard. And that's what Susan <laughs> wanted. Please try to produce one in one room. Okay, let me, let me ask uh, uh, the question, uh, who would like to go to the uh, consultations uh, discussion on um, uh, evaluation and uh, selection uh, mechanisms? Please, if you would stand up, I, again, it's easier. Rich. <laughs> so about a dozen. So uh, maybe maybe then we could we could uh, we we could see uh, that um, the process no the team uh, theme group meets in room 25 the uh, evaluation uh, group meets in uh, 306 3306 
and we will try to get a technology in the room. We will do our best. Thank you. Uh, time is 8.30, 8.30, tomorrow morning. So thank, thank you very much. And uh, I uh, remind that there is an invitation which uh, uh, is extended to all participants. Uh, on the 8th floor restaurant, when you go out the room, you turn, you go the, the, through the corridor to the, big, to the big hall and then take elevator uh, to the 8th floor. Okay, thank you very much. And we will, we will uh, reconvene meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock sharp. Thank you.